Right. So you sent like a, a couple maps in, uh, like last month. It's almost a month ago, actually. Uh, we're gonna look at the three maps. We're gonna look at King's Row, Hanamura, and uh, Li Jiang Tower because you mentioned that those maps were uh, kind of close. And then you also have three different game modes that you can analyze, so it's not all uh, the same stuff. Um, yeah, I'll, like I'll be doing a lot of the tanking part, and Flips can do the support part, of course, and Shadowers can do DPS specific things. But we'll all be looking to get some uh, like general team play things involved. Just to my oh, I like playing. the pink color. I like the pink color too. But uh, it is playing for everyone. Yep. Nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Twenty seconds to go. We get a follower. Nice. <laughs> My favorite. I already watched this one preparing it. <laughs> nice. I mean, is that our Vaser? That's like the other off tank triad. I don't know. He joined another team though. Ah, okay. By the way, we're playing uh, Zen Goats versus Zen Goats. Our favorite matchup. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Alright, so one thing that I'd like to hear from you. What is, um, like, when you're playing the Zen Goats versus Zen Goats matchup, what's the primary goal that you have in mind? Like, just some of them. Uh, I think for the Brawl, our win condition boils down to um, getting Discord on Ryan and killing him. Mm -hmm. Except for Bobble can cleanse Discord, so we want to bait the pr projected barrier mm -hmm. with cool. aggression. Once it's um, applied, we can we can really try to abuse the Discord on Ryan and That's aggress easy. on him without right. basically killing ourselves in the process. That's always very handy, yeah. That's like a good general plan. We'll see. Uh, it's always like a bit dependent on the match context, of course. Maybe uh, the enemy team will have like a break that overextends or Lucian does something weird. That's yeah. Yeah, I, I think uh, main thing you want to do in a goats versus goats masterpiece, you want to punish mistakes. Mm -hmm, and definitely. That's right. the easiest way to win a goats matchup. Mm -hmm. Or goats mirror. Yes. Okay. So here we're like looking to engage. We make a point of contact. They use team bubble. We instantly use both bubbles here. It's something I noticed very quickly, and I felt that you didn't really get that much self charge. I don't know if that was correct or. Uh, I can't remember. I'm pretty it's sure they're both much. destroyed there, Archil. Uh, uh, they were both destroyed, okay. He, he's on 80 right now, I can almost yeah, see okay. it. Yeah, okay. That does mean, however, though, that you do not have any bubbles to rotate and progress further. So you might get some charge, but I would say that you would favor uh, rotating the bubbles rather than using them both simultaneously. Yeah, okay. And then we lose mech, that's a bit unfortunate. We get a D mech, that's good. Um, in this case, you do get your mech back, so that's fine enough. I'm almost back in mech. All right, so we have to look about like we have to look at a few things now. Um, their brig was able to burst our Reinhardt, so she's probably got a lot of ultra there because there's a lot of damage that she did, especially because Toxwood already got the uh, team bubble on after which she got discarded, and of course their Reinhardt had a lot of swinging. So we're looking at quite a few ults coming up for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since your Ryan got melted and the uh, killer you make as well, they're gonna have a lot of ult charge. Yeah, they do get one good pick on Lucier. That's nice. I think the enemy team, like, this is a good job of, like, punishing the enemy mistakes. They would have had an advantage, but two of them kind of fed. And you also blocked the Shatter in the process, so that's good. <laughs> right, there's an escape. So, right. as, a quick, as a quick question then, yeah? what are kind of some other mistakes to look out for when playing against other enemies? So we've, I think we're getting quite good at looking for enemy bubbles. Are there any other obvious mistakes we need to kind of start tracking? trying to really punish them you know what else would you recommend we start keeping an eye out for um things i always look out for early usage of uh brick armor pack otherwise like in many cases the brick armor pack can really save people and if that's offline then you can definitely start to focus the targets down very effectively other than that uh look for like weighted lucio amps or lucio boops especially because lucios like to try to display your displace your reinhardt or brick and allow for focus fire so if you negate that boop he's quite often out of position and doesn't really have the tools to uh, get himself out. Same goes if he wastes his amp, of course, but that's a bit more obvious. Other than that, um, I like positional to focus... Mistakes, that's positional it. mistakes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, think that, that, I think that's... Yeah, that, I think those three are probably really good things for someone to keep track of, so that's, that's great. Thank you very much. Yeah, and otherwise you can always look at, like, Diva Matrix, but those are, like, very individual. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. All right, one thing I want to highlight here, though, as we're about to win this fight, uh, we clean him up nice. Now we have to decide who's going to stay on point or payload. Yeah. And I'm it's surely not Jazaria. <laughs> um, yeah, never, sorry. Right. Sorry? Far. 
Uh, could Zen be an option to leave on the payload? Uh, in many cases, Zen or Brig, but um, you have to kind of pick your poison here, because you basically killed them all at once, so they will all have to close spawn. Um, I would say you can maybe take some space aggressively here, but I wouldn't say that you want to like all push up really aggressively, because you know that they're, you're meeting them all head first again. So you're fighting against six there, there's no like real staggers and split spawns to speak of. Um, However, if you put your, like, you're basically one down, essentially, and you miss out on all your Zarya damage, I think in many cases having uh, the Brig or the Zenyatta on payload would be the best option. Yeah, 90% of the time I'd say Brig. <laughs> Maybe if you have Rally, you might want to push with the Brig, but... Yeah. Otherwise, just push with this, and this goes too valuable. Well, depends on the line of sight of the map, of course. Here we, uh, this is kind yeah. of what happens. If we're missing like so much damage in the front line, so we're basically yeah, fighting with one down, and then on top of that, they uh, also have a lot more damage. They use rally and start to speed into us, and then yeah, someone gets melted. Yeah. Should have obviously like just sped out the same way, but you ended up getting yep. a split. <laughs> right, so we're going for a regroup here. Right, they did use a shatter on rally, so we should have an ultimate advantage coming up soon. We have our own grab the bomb coming in. <laughs> Push on the right side. He's gonna early team bubble. Nice. Okay, we can grab. Both grab bombs get used, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. That fight was a bit scrappy. Let me quickly rewind it. Uh, one of the things I would generally say is that, like, walking around the corner and instantly opening up with an ult is not always, like, too smart because people can really see it coming. Like, if you walk around the corner and, like, bam, shatter. I think that's, like, a bit too telltale. Usually you want to like use them a bit intermittently when some important cooldowns have been used by the enemy team. So for instance, um, it's much easier to shatter when they've used their team bubble and it's much easier to grab once they've, like, uh, say, uh, used the Diva Matrix a bit already. You don't really want to open up with it too much. Was, uh, pause quickly. Yeah. Was there like uh, a set plan? I didn't hear most of it, but I didn't really hear like the plan to go in and use the sh Did not really seem yeah, like I, enough. Yeah, like uh, making a plan before you go in is... Very important. Ultimate yeah, management was not the, Yeah, it wasn't really uh, no, it wasn't yeah, any ultimate management. Too. Yeah. You have more resources to spend than them. Mm -hmm. Alright. So... Get a lot of things going back and forth, okay? Um, so if I'm not mistaken, you wanted to use a Grav Diva Bomb in response to their Grav Diva Bomb, right? Yeah. I think it's generally best to just wait for it. Because especially yeah. when, like, the way that they're all clumped up. I'm trapping, I'm trapping, I'm trapping. They have their run out on the front line, and their break is on the other side, so... You have to be very like keen in where you place your bomb in order to get the value from it. Uh, I'm gonna yeah, quickly okay. like uh, draw us in a diamond, otherwise it's maybe not. W were you in the air uh, when you were grabbed there? Uh, yeah, you w they were grabbed on the wall. Okay. Otherwise, uh, generally you always use lose your ult first when there's a diva bomb coming in, but you might know that already. Mm. Um, in many cases, in the Zen goats, you use transcendence to uh, save yourself yeah. from uh, gravitons and you use yeah, drop. The enemy team is grabbed too. They're not anywhere nearby to do damage. So there, there, there's no damage coming in really, except for the diva bombs. Yeah, but yeah. in general, what you do, um, if you draw like a little diamond here, whoop. this is like a four-man graph, right? This is a pretty good one. If Reinhardt shields one side, Brick shields the other, and you have Azaria self up and Azaria team up blocking the other sides, that means that all those four people have like some sort of shielding on them, which completely negates damage from the diva bombs. So if you like place that correctly, you will essentially form like a little diamond. All of which are like shielding abilities that will literally block the impact of the diva bomb and just either break your shield or give your Zarya a charge. Either one works well. Then you can use Transcendence as like an additional thing. Let's say if there's like one opening spot, then Zenyatta is completely immortal when he's when he's using Transcendence, so he doesn't lose any HP. And if he has armor on him, he also keeps that. And then you should be able to like live through a four or five man diva bomb graph combo, which is definitely fine enough. And in that case, if you can live through that, you can always come back with your like graph diva bomb after. Because in yeah. this case, the enemy team has set themselves up quite well, and you need to really get some of that shielding out of the way. Things you can think of as bursting Zarya bubbles. Most commonly, you'll pin the enemy Reinhardt out of the way, and let's say if your own Reinhardt gets stunned and whatnot, you want to have your brick come in from an alternate angle. So let's say that your Reinhardt charges in. Okay, it doesn't work. Unlucky. Uh, then brick can maybe come in from an off angle and stun him from behind and still get the damage in. Those are the type of things you want to look for. Because now it's like you kind of lose one by chance almost, because the give one lands on top of you when you're falling from the air. And uh, yeah, you use your own graph combo, but there's nothing to follow up because you're all well, stunned on the wall. <laughs> yeah, now it was kind of like, things got a bit messy again. Like, you can split a tiny bit in Goats v Goats at times, because you can at least have some more map control. But you have to always be sure that when you split, that you actually um, split in a way where you can all help each other out. And in this case, you guys were fully resetting, so the split on the right side near the hotel was not really uh, too helpful. 
Yeah, I think that was my mistake. I kind of like something I've been working on the last few yeah. uh, months. I have, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, you, we talked about the shadow, right? Mm -hmm. And um, like you said, we should before the fight we should have like basically our old plan, right? Like yeah. to say like this fight we're gonna graph bomb, mm -hmm. and then everyone knows. Um, but with shadow, like I often like to just kind of do it spontaneously. Like in that in that situation scenario, I just wanted to like kind of jump around the corner and do like maybe a mm -hmm. surprise shadow, and like. I know, like, the spontaneous shatters, I feel like sometimes I just shatter the shield and it looks really stupid, but sometimes I get a five-man shatter and we get, like, an easy fight win. Yeah. Um, would um, you say I should keep shatter more for, like, planned combos, or is it okay to use shatter, like, spontaneously mm -hmm. when I see, like, a big opening? Usually what you do with, like, uh, Ryan Zarya compositions is that you use the shatter one fight when you do not have a Zarya ultimate online yet, so your farmer, if you get a good shatter, your Zarya farms your graviton up, and then when she uses her Graviton, you can farm your Earth Shatter back in, in the Grav. So that's like the most common rotation, going like mutually. Um, now in Ghost for Ghost, you'll probably farm your Earth Shatter quite a lot, so uh, it's not always as easy to like outright plan it. Uh, one thing I would say there, you always want to let your team know that you're planning on Shattering, so at least like guy like the people know that you're intending on using it. Um, no, like, even, like, I'm going for a Shatter this fight. Yeah. Or like even if it's like very spontaneous, like let's say you for some reason hit like a five man fire strike plus Discord orb, you know, you like you suddenly get like fifty percent on it. Maybe you can use like a bit more spontaneously, but you still always want to know like say that you're using it rather than just outright using it. And yeah. with regards to like surprise shatters, um it will kind of depend on what the enemy Ryan does, but what most people will do, like in the like as soon as the two teams make contact, they're like, hey, Okay, you guys are here. I'm gonna put up my shield and just kind of see what happens. Like they're rarely instantly pressing like shift and charge and all that. So usually you want to use your shatter a bit more intermittently when, like I said, a few cooldowns have been used and maybe things get a bit scrappy. Because if all people are facing one direction and they have all their cooldowns online, and some guy like jumps around the corner and instantly shatters, it's like yeah, that's probably going to be a block. But if it happens in between when like the brig is just trying to uh, flail someone and the sorry, I just use their bubble and whatnot, then people are a bit more prone to being shattered. So they want to def definitely use like in the fight. It's not always the like direct yeah, yeah, fight opener. Yeah, I agree. I think it was a very optimistic yeah. shatter. It was an optimistic shatter. Yeah. But, like one of the things as well, like uh, Shadowdars mentioned that you want to have some sort of ultimate plan. You used a lot of ults that fight, and they did kind of as well. But you could have probably like if you say okay, we're just losing grab combo, then you could have maybe just let you use that one and your own transcendence when things got messy, and then we all got shattered. I think he got booped around, Tux, didn't you? Mm, not sure. I don't, I don't think I played like very good this match. I, I might have been up a little bit further, right? Well, I can learn from those. Yeah, I think like with this like situation right now, I really, like struggled a lot. Like it took us a lot of fights to get the payload mm -hmm. through the search. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah I guess some it could be with better okay. ult management. Um, good matrix by your diva, even though she's not on the team. I did, however, instantly notice that you use both your sorry bubbles really early again. They're best reserved for uh, countering stuns or like very important damage. They're not per se yeah. instant charge things. Yeah. You'll get your charge as soon as you start fighting. Bubbles are very important in mirror guts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not getting any progress on the payload as well right now, so you notice yeah. that faster. Oh, yeah, it's good. If you want to get charged before the fight, like you could do like a poke phase where you mm -hmm. use your bubbles to get charged, and then afterwards you can engage with the bubbles. Yeah. But if you're not if you're gonna do that, like if you're not gonna poke them a lot, you should just save bubbles for engaging dot use, but it was. Yeah. Just, yeah, you always want to go into an engagement with both sorry bubbles, really. Otherwise, it's rough. Right. Would you recommend like in introducing a poke face into our playstyle so we can charge our Zarya up if she, let's say, dies and it starts with zero charge? Um, could do, but it's really situational. Like, um, yeah. If you if you wanted to go like a top of it, you, uh, you probably don't want to poke. Yeah, I think like it's really weird because in the goats we goats, you don't really poke around that much because your range is so limited. Um, mm. It would really depend on the ultimate economy. Like like you mentioned, if your Zarya died and is at zero charge, and their Zarya doesn't have a Graviton yet and she does have charge, then it's definitely disadvantageous to uh, have a poke phase because they just deal more damage. It's really like, you gotta kind of see whether it's useful to you, so make sure that you at least farm your own ults and that the enemy doesn't farm them back as hard. For instance, um, it would sound nice to get like, let's say, 20% on a Diva Bomb, but in the process, their Zarya just farms an entire Transcendence and the Trotsky. Right. 
same things. Kind of go here. We are a bit messy in how we like approach the payload here. We keep a couple of people on. And I think like Flippy said, keeping either and Yata or your break on the payload would be good. I think in this case you want to push up with the Discord, yeah. But um, just, just keep one. Mm -hmm. Break should it? Either one, yeah. But like, um, always break and payload only. This front line needs a loose show. <laughs> Otherwise they're not mobile and they cannot disengage where needed. Yeah, now those people just get some nice. Alright, we do land a good shadow now. We use some ultimates back and forth. Alright, this is good enough. They use their transcendence. The Dave Vaughn, like you said, we're gonna hear it in a second. It was a bit optimistic, but at least it cleans up the fight, so it's not too big a deal to use it here. And they could have theoretically had B drop coming up as well, so using the D bomb just to confirm it is fine enough. Uh, the round was dead though, so I think he should, could have held on to it and just threw it into the back line if they did drop the B. Could have, yeah, it's a bit. Um... Yeah, because they don't have run if they, need, if they push up into you, they just die. Yeah. Even if they have beat. It's like, it's a bit uh, suboptimal, but it's not too big of a deal. I could see why they do nah, it. Nah, it was fine, it was fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question about pushing up in Goats v Goats. Mm -hmm. I, I think, like, in some pro matches, some teams they like almost zero push up. Like they almost have like six people camping payload and they push up very little. But then like some some I think other matches or like in our scrims, sometimes we saw teams that like really aggressively pushed up and they got a lot of value out of staggers. I see. Uh, would you say like for goats it's favorable to push up and risking a five v six? Mm. Or would you say it's just you, missing out one person is not worth uh, worth like the space you get? Depending so you just... on the map and depending on the situation of ultimate economy and staggers. Um, like in general, I think push like in most compositions, pushing up aggressively and securing yourself some space and securing some extra ult charge is definitely good. So in general, I would say it's a, like a pretty decent thing. But I have to watch out for a couple things. If the enemy team all spawns together, then you do not want to take a fight five v six because you should just flat out lose that. Unless you're just well ten times better, but let's not uh, <laughs> assume that too much. Um, I would say that like um. In general, like six man camping the payload is not as beneficial because you just lose a lot of space that you could otherwise use in the fight coming up, in the upcoming fight, sorry. Um but I would say that you only want to like secure space aggressively when you can actually do it, so make sure that you do not get overrun by the enemy team. If you can confirm any stagger kills, perfect, you've just bought yourself more space and more ultimate charge. And you also want to make sure that um when you're pushing up aggressively that you at least get like some ultimate value from it, or at least some space. So you do not want to like, uh, push up with five people who already have their ultimates and have the enemy team farm a lot of their ults, for instance. Okay. But it's really dependent on the map. <laughs> right. In this case, we almost got overrun, but we managed to disengage well enough. And we do eventually get the counters. Nice. That's good punishment. Yeah, killed the Reinhardt and then they were all still lined up. It was juicy. Yeah, I think this is one of those spontaneous shatters where it's hard for me to predict it. Um, like, I don't know whether... Not entirely. I mean, I think he... Um, right after he died. Right after he died, yeah, but either way, the enemy team like would have to use a lot of resources to even keep him alive. So I think the shatter there was good. And like I said, it's maybe a bit spontaneous, like you saw the opportunity, but at least you did wait for them to use a lot of cooldowns and abilities. That's better than I walk around the corner and shatter into six shields. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Alright, there's a rally. Yeah, good grab to counteract it. Divum comes in. Yeah, you also get grabbed. Nice. You do eventually get it off. Okay, here's where I think get messy. Um, I think it's a bit difficult with people who are trying out, of course. You could have maybe done the grab Divum a bit sooner. Because in this case, you were kind of waiting about both the Diva and you for things to happen. It's fine. And then you can complete your own charge. Uh, check a little Divum placement. And here's where things get interesting, because they use their own um thing right now and i'm wondering i can't really see it but the zarya may have had a bubble and the brig may have been able to turn a shield a certain way yeah like i tried to like go as close as possible to it and shield it as yeah Target? it's a bit rough I use yeah i use yeah. bubbles too early there so mm -hmm. i mean um it's a bit difficult to, like just to, to track those things but especially when the enemy team has a grab df bomb online and they haven't used it in a while uh, it's definitely worthwhile to save at least one bubble and maybe even two the opportunity to present itself, but you have to kind of see uh, if you don't get overrun, of course. Yeah. Right. That was a bit weird, because that runner could have easily been punished, I felt. And I believe your Lucio stone spawn? Yeah. Okay, I want to rewind that, because this was weird. Uh, okay. Well, your Lucio's not back in the fight. Just knocked him out of it. That Ryan could have like easily been focused down now. I think especially when you try to move in. Uh, with the Lucia, I think it's definitely helpful if you now like make a call what you do, because in this case, staying on healing R is not that beneficial when you're still 
either trying to disengage or are they either like trying to fight the enemy team. I think you definitely want to have some momentum going here. And now it's a full reset again, yeah. I'm not entirely sure, but how long have we been sitting on this beat drop for? I think for quite a while, right? In street space, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think so, yeah. It definitely looked to use it at some point. Uh, I think the best usage in many cases is either if you like, if you get shattered and you need to like block some general damage, you can use it for that. Uh, beat drop is not really reserved for Graviton Surge in this case. Or you could look to like engage engage uh, quite aggressively with it and get some extra space going. But you definitely want to look to uh, get some buyout because they're farming up there also and we are not really using our owns yet. Do we get a good pick on Brig here? Big Shatter. Okay, now it's just good clean up again. Someone needs to stay on payload. I know. You only have good awareness of the payload though. Yeah, not the biggest concern. Bit scared of having the Lucio away from from your Ryan here. Mm -hmm. Was danger and goats. Indeed. When you're that close, especially like having Lucio up there to boop them away and not get them to the payload is also important. Indeed. <laughs> Reset the map, which is not needed, but fine enough. Cool. Uh, any questions on your offense round here so far? Not really. Before we move on. Uh, maybe some advice about this archway, like just for, past first point. Like, mm -hmm. I think we struggle a lot with there, and I feel like there's like like some exotic attack routes, like where you go over high ground through like the window that you can see in this view, um, or like you go like behind almost like to the pub or like one I of the side alleys. Um, I would not advise going through here because the enemy team is holding close by the archway, and in that case, you'll have to drop through the window and just like be suspended midair and take a fuck ton of damage or at least shield poke. And then by the time you drop, you're like instantly in, like right in front of the enemy team, like face first. And unless you like all drop simultaneously perfect, then maybe you can make it work. But in general, you do not want to drop into the enemy team like that. So window is a bit of a no go for me. What you like the most common things are of course like going through main and brawling it out based on of, like uh, good ability tracking and good ability usage and whatnot. Maybe you can use an ultra too. Going around the back right, if you really want to avoid that central choke, I guess you could do it. But you're basically putting yourself in another choke. So it's just a bit of a difficult stretch to uh, push through. You just have to be very keen on what abilities you can use at what moments and what ults you can maybe use to get through. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, here the enemy team's gonna play a fuck ton of DPS. Alright, so we do some scouting with David, that's always good. Call DPS, okay. We made a call, that's good scouting. This early on a Saya as well, you can you can do the poke and take a bit of energy. When they're fair, it's super easy and you know they can't close enough immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay, so we're all like kind of buckling up in hotels, fine enough. Alright, so now I have to kind of see, like, our composition is not very well suited at dealing with this, but we have to kind of see what we want to do. Uh, I want to hear from you guys again. What would be your primary plan to uh, deal with their composition here? Hmm. I think when, um, like these days we play Ana Goats into Zana Goats, so mm -hmm. we have a bit more healing. Yeah, but overall, good. like if we play Goats into quad DPS, like on this first point defense, mm -hmm. we will basically try to minimize damage taken by using Hotel, mm -hmm. um, and then basically abuse that it's hard for them to touch point. Like, like Reinhardt, I will only basically only touch point when when they touch point or when they're getting close to a tick, mm -hmm. um, minimize damage taken, and then. Like, hopefully, we'll be able to force them off the point so I can go back and hold, I'll charge my shield. Maybe Diva and uh, Zarya can ping pong point contest. Mm -hmm. Something like that, I think. And, and I think, like, especially since we have the Sen here, you know, like, once the ball goes aggressive and, like, you know, we can, like, you know, stun him, discord him, and, like, burn mm -hmm. him down pretty easily. Or we should at least, you know, at least get that, you know. Yeah, so um, I was about to say, like, what is your primary target focus? You guys are looking most at focusing Hammond down then, or? Uh, like yeah, punishing him when he like goes aggressive for the pile driver, mm -hmm. and then like uh, you know, of course if the tracer comes too close or somewhere, you know, always like good to you know look out for the stun on them and then call it out. 
I think I guess like Fire Widow, it's more you know you you limit what they can do. You know you mm -hmm. try to just like peek as little as possible, just like make their value as little as possible, if it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, Shelly and Flipsy, what would you say would be a good way to target focus in this case, or what would I be mean, a good target? Uh, focus target? I agree with anything that's been said so far. It's hard to do much else with, Indeed. with this comp against quad DPS. Yes. Mm -hmm. If uh, the Hammond decides to pan down in your face, bring shield to the pan down so she can bash him, you discord him, you pin Charge him. him. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I yeah. mean, bubbles for hack sometimes if you don't think you can cancel it fast enough. Yeah. And, and Saya, if with high energy, can always spam out widow positions. I like doing that personally. Mm -hmm. You gotta be careful too. You can have someone Indeed. scout through like the other hotel door every once in a while if you wanna do that. Yeah. And of course, have Diva Matrix uh, the far shots at least. Then in that case, you mitigate maybe two of their. Uh... Range deep, or like you mitigate the far mercy, and with only one hero. But yeah, I think going for the Hammond is definitely difficult, but it's the best option you have at hand, really. The fire is gonna get old very quickly. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta keep track of the fire. Keep mm -hmm. uh, DM slash bubble, or just fly into the fire with a diva mech. Always fun. <laughs> yeah, I'll give it. It's uh, not always optimal. Not always optimal, indeed. But uh, it's definitely difficult composition to run goats into, and uh, here we instantly lose one two. That's our support's dead now, and now we have no Lucia, so we're very prone to being a uh, little staggered. Oh, can you go back uh, 15 seconds? 15 seconds, sure thing. Uh, this, like this? Do you, I don't th you're not actually standing inside hotel, are you here? Yeah, I think they're no. just around the, no. around the outside, yeah, I definitely want to stand yeah. inside. Yeah, you should stand inside. Actual cover. Because yeah, now you're either taking way damage. Way much better, way better poke than you do, mm -hmm. so... You don't now, pick up. Yeah. now you're taking either like actual damage or shield HP damage when you could also just be using a wall, which is infinite. Yeah, by now it's uh, a firm reset time, yeah. You could decide to just like instantly wipe on point here because there's no use to walking back. You're like you do not have the mobility, you're not gonna get alive, even though you spontaneously get a kill. Nice. By the way, we're still looking at a far who's shooting us and it's still kinda risky. Huh. Okay. Dio's in trouble. Okay, I did not expect us to get this two kills there, but uh, I guess we can push up now. I did want to highlight though, in this case it worked, and you actually mitigated their pulse bomb as well. But the way you like disengage in that fight was very risky, and it could have been exploited very easily. Okay. We do not have any support, so Diva needs to hide to DM the farm. Yeah. And there's the EMP. There she gets EMP, that's lost fight. Yep. Yeah. I'd say in general, you it wouldn't even be bad to hold the top left window there as uh, Diva. Just for like a starter, so you can at least yeah, keep the Widow at bay. Widow can't be there. And you can also EMP. Dodge the EMP. Indeed. Exactly. Also, like, yeah. the callouts were good. You, you, like, you were aware of what's going to happen, but you didn't really react to it. You just yeah. said it, okay, we got to keep an eye out, but what does that matter? Like, when you don't actually do it. You keep an eye out, and then you're going to still get fucked by the yeah. act Actually, actively do something to prevent it. Mm -hmm. Either so what you're you positioning say, uh, or... Yeah, what, 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 what should we have done if we know the uh, EMP barrage in this situation? You didn't have any defensive walls, you didn't yeah. have transfer beat, so you mm. even needed to DM the yeah. for that. You were not going to survive. I also Indeed. think that supports could easily play inside the little uh, red room. Just, you know, yeah, like, the mini, right? yeah. yeah, on the mini. There's no reason yeah. not to stay yeah. in there. And like, uh, let's say you're playing Zen and you just like jiggle peek around the corner. As soon as you see that Sombra like uncooking, you might even be able to get behind the wall and also save yourself from getting EMP'd. Yeah, you can basically force them to choose the EMP or support. So the rest also yeah. really like this. this. I like the side positioning honestly because they can place a lot of people on payload and be effective still. So just standing like split off like this isn't even a bad thing in this situation as long as you don't get fucked by like a flanger. Yeah. Uh, so I actually like this a lot, like making the diva stand a bit further uh, towards the wall uh, mm -hmm. and and in the copy hole, and then Saya a bit further back as well, just ready to help Ryan if they need to, but just otherwise waiting. Yeah, I would also say Lucia can maybe play a bit closer to the Reinhardt. Like in this case, it's weird For with sure. the EMP, but uh, in general, if your if your Reinhardt's not getting speed boost by Lucio, he's going to be uh, taking a lot of damage, which is not really needed. Uh, right now, he, his Ryan's job is just contesting payload. I think. Yeah, yeah, using the wall, like just stand using around. the wall to your advantage. Like, just gonna take yeah. the cover area. And that's all the Ryan can do. So, mm -hmm. okay, if if your diva gets EMP, you lose this fight, though. So that's very important. That, uh, that happened. Because sadly. you don't have support, support ultimates. Mm -hmm. yeah, very tough fight to win. So I'm not mm -hmm. too too judgmental. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> 
That's definitely one of the things against like EMP. Uh, a lot of people split out like incredibly far, which is like at least you don't get like uh, a six-man EMP, but it's very hard to help one another out. In general, it's best to like play kind of near each other, but all use different types of cover. That way, not yeah. everyone gets EMP simultaneously, and as soon as you hear the EMP land, you're all within range to help one another out. Also, one thing you can do with Saria, if you bubble yours, then Yada, he won't lose his shield. Shield HP, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely help. Just yes, the bubble will get removed by the EMP. Yeah, into which shield. actually gives That's you tricky. <laughs> so should I like kind of hide and then bubble the Zen, or like... No, you um, can do it. As soon as you see the Sombra, you could... You need, if you you need to be ultra wary time. for the Sombra. Like, uh, try hard audio cues and vis visual cues, really, that's what I would do. So yeah. boring, alright. Mm -hmm. Right, um, so like, we're gonna end up swapping this comp after this point, so I'm just gonna watch this, like, uh, go to comp playoff for now. Then we're gonna maybe get into some different compositions that we could run against this. In this case, we're really fucking split, and Tux is kinda deep, and the backline is getting, uh, in some sort of trouble. Mm -hmm. I think in this case, using just to clear mines. I think it's kind of okay, but can you elaborate, Clipsy, or...? Uh, to use what? To use... Clear the minefields from Hammond. Wait, is the video playing or? I yeah, paused it. Paused for me. No, I paused it for you. Yeah. Oh. Okay. No, I'm still in like in this archway just before the. Yeah, EP. me too. Oh, um, try to F5 or maybe I should. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna just go uh, ten seconds or so back. Uh, still see no change. Okay, playing now. Is it working for you now or not? Mm, yeah. No, for reason for me. Okay. Uh, I'll just reload the page. See I'll just reload for me. I'm gonna do the same thing. See what happens. I, th I think the the sessions kind of time out after a certain time. Mm. No, they can play for much longer. Like I've had more than like a two. Hour, I've had like a two hour session at times, so it should be fine. Huh. Uh, okay. Got to remember the timer. One hour and four minutes. I'm gonna quickly end session and try to go live again. See what it does. It does at times have a. Uh, Pfizer does at times have a bit of an issue. Yeah. Right, so we refresh uh, now, or? Uh, I'm trying to set up, but it will not let me set up again. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Fuck. Um, can maybe flip your shally. Uh, I'm gonna put the uh, link again in Team Boss from the YouTube thingy. Could you try yeah. to see if you can maybe put it up on your own uh, Pfizer if that works? I'm gonna put it in uh, chat. Give it a shot. You can try. At least here's the uh, footage where we're like at the one hour four minutes. Yeah. It will not let me uh, put the video on, sadly. Have you guys tried Q.gg? Not yet. I think it's uh, like a similar system. Because like, I think, I'm not sure if Visor officially still supports this these like live sessions. They're really, really nice, but mm -hmm. I think they're, I don't know, their product is kind of focused differently these days. <laughs> I guess. Uh, undergoing upgrades. Vice is currently undergoing upgrades and will be launching with something new soon. Uh, nice. Why do I why do I start it? Why does it not work? Uh, top right should have a start button. Yep. Hmm. Uh, so some reason Visor won't work for me either. Okay, then we're gonna look at the other side. What was it called, uh, Tux? Uh, Q.gg. I mean, I don't know, I've, I've only read about it on Reddit, but I think it's similar. Um... No, worst comes to result, just do watch together. Uh, it's a Chinese site, what the fuck? Uh, it should be. Oh, I might have gotten it to work, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think it might be easier to get, uh, try to get Visor. I think mine works as well. So let's pick. Is it working for you, uh, Shally, or? Mine works if you want to hop into mine. Uh, that's okay, yeah. That is a bit tricky. I put the link in uh, Coast Chat, and you can link your thingy in the team bots, then we'll work on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Nice. And just mute my mic, I guess. Sure, sure. Uh, 
Uh, that that was the wrong link, I think. <laughs> I think so. Uh, yes. There you go. Uh, and we're like at one hour and forty minutes. Slap dashes, uh... Ah, this is, this is an old VOD. That's nice. I remember reviewing this one as well. Uh, is this, is, isn't this the one though, or what? I posted the link in the chat. Uh, I got the thing. I... Okay, I got it in the coast chat as well, so we should be able to swap it out. I may have to unpause pause because I'm still in the chat. Sorry, uh, Flipsy. The link you posted to Xfang, isn't that, that, that's this video now, pretty sure. Yeah, uh, this one I put in code chat. It's got the uh, YouTube.b in, in the end. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I guess, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um... The same video, isn't it? I think it's... Uh, yeah. We'll be around here, right? Uh, one hour, four minutes is where we were, yeah? In the vault. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Let's watch it. Yes! Is it playing for you or not? Yeah, he's... Not for it's playing for me right now. Okay, it's playing for me. Yeah. Not for me, I'm gonna have five, there's one now. Not for me either. Oh, fucking hell, Visor. Lost it. Yeah, like, I'm literally still in the Junker Town, uh, Bob. Yeah, same. Huh. Goddamn, Visor. Let's try again. Uh, Team Vods. Actually being cocked by Visor. Oh, now it works. Still, it's playing right now. Yeah, same, same. Still trying to get I'm in? I'm still on Junker Town. Um, I mean, we could try my session. Um, now it wants me to log in, I guess. Nice. Please do it. Nice. Might have to jump a bit back when our jewel gets hey, back in. in. Nice. I'm in the vault as well now. This nice, is good. let's hop back. Okay. Yeah. Wait, we're in, we're in Philipsy's vault, right? Flipsy's vault, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. No, 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 I'm still going solo queue. Bunker time. <laughs> Fuck. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, Does play pause make a difference? Is it working for you, Lone Wolf or Dance? Yeah, it's yeah. working for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. Oh, I posted uh, another link, I don't know if. Hey, you might be on the wrong link. Yeah. Alright, hang on, I'm loading this new link then. Mm hmm. Ah, work. It's working. Perfect. Perfect. Nice. nice. Okay. So you just lost that fight yeah. being people rushed. So. Okay, so one thing that's kind of applying here as well, uh, similar to how you want to, to, to like uh, seek shelter in the hotel, we're also taking a lot of poke in this phase too, as you may see. Yeah. But uh, in this point, it's kind of uh, impossible to avoid the poke. Mm -hmm. I could have maybe taken cover like uh, around one of the health back sites, almost by the checkpoint, because I don't think it's really needed if you take the fight super early here, in the streets where there's multiple damage angles. You're gonna have one fight left anyway here. If yeah. you lose this, you lose points, so might, might as, as well go like the far side around and use your time. Indeed, might as well make it count. Yeah. Also, if, if you're standing underneath uh, the whole bridge contraption going on, uh, mm -hmm. it'll be a bit harder for Prefer to get to you. Not hard enough though, in my opinion. But... No, no, but... It's hard as you can make it in an open space. It'll at least be very hard to to get the barrage in if you're standing underneath there. You're gonna have to get down low. She has close the barrage. Okay, so we're we'll a bit split here. We lose our Dave and Mac. Tuxrog is alone up front. Right. And here we use the uh, Zenyatta to clear the minefield. Yeah, we did use both the defense vaults though. Mm -hmm. Indeed. They have another barrage since. since we took a lot space. of poke, yeah. Okay, so now, um, when they cut the point, can you pause for a second? Yeah. 
Fucking S. Okay. S is good enough. Okay. Uh, we were mentioning that we're going to swap uh, compositions. I think we're going to stick to most of this. Nothing. Dance is going to swap as well. But Tuck is going to stay on the Reinhardt. Um, so, Shadowlars, you mentioned that the Protecting McCree combo will be pretty good against this. Please do yeah, elaborate. Much. Well, um, like the whole reason is you're still going to be together a lot of the time. Uh, like playing, playing close, so you're not susceptible to individual dives. Being screwed over by one person and having to take individual duels, while the McCree can deal with most of the characters on the enemy team, even even the Widowmaker a lot of the time because his new range buff makes him do a fuck ton of damage even on range as long as you can hit your shots. So you can you can basically force all the DPS and even Hammond on the enemy team to have to be a lot more careful. And alongside Brig, it means you're very hard to die, which just means that the enemy team won't get as much out of the comp they're playing right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if ever they even ball decides to engage on you, you just flash, flash him first and bash him. This court should. Yeah, not yeah. should be able to burn him, especially with yeah. right click is really yeah. strong right now. Although mm -hmm. it's getting nerfed like in a few yeah. days or something. But um, interestingly enough, like usually with a uh, quad DPS setup, uh, like the Widowmaker, Far Mercy, Hamlet is all kind of uh, commonplace, but usually there's like two mid range DPSers, like the classic variant of that was Soldier and Hanzo. And that would make a sort of a regular two to two dive comp with let's say like a Genji and a Widowmaker could do very well because in like the old school case there were like several heroes from DPS that were somewhat exploitable to being though. In this case, with the enemy composition, there's nothing that's really susceptible to being uh to being like dove by Winston Diva and maybe a Genji because they can all just get the hell out of there. So I think it needs something to deal with the close range damage that they have is good enough. Then with the McCree, since the map is kind of in close area, you should be able to at least deal with the Widowmaker, and if not, you're dealing with like four of the other heroes, so that's fine enough. So in this case, I think the McCree comp is very good, yeah. If they have like um, a, bit, a little bit less flankers and more range, you might be looking at a more standard dive comp of heroes like Genji, but that's uh, up for debate. Or just floats. Or floats, yeah. <laughs> it can also work. Because you can just pressure the Widow. Indeed. She's qualified. Right, but uh, I think we can play again unless the guys have any questions here. No, I'm good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now she's reset time essentially. Last bit of staggers. Oh, Diva's gonna get staggered. That's unlucky. <laughs> At least he got killed instantly. Yeah. yeah. Lucky. It's fine. Keep the bomb, yes. Mm -hmm. They don't have the issue, but they do. Yeah, so now we're on double yeah. sniper with Ana, interestingly enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'd say if you're running a double sniper, it's generally just beneficial to have a Mercy in there, and you also kind of want to Lucia in this case, so I'm not sure whether this comp is ideal. It's a nice good, bomb. Deal, good deal of bomb though, yeah, but... The curiosity, yeah. Uh, like, curiosity, was that a reaction to the Sombra coming in, or was it just a... Uh, like a toss-in? Uh... Uh, that was a tryout. Okay. Uh, it... sure. Oh yeah, yeah, we yeah. can't be sure then. Uh, we can say it was a good yeah. bomb though. Yeah. Can indeed. Yeah, I didn't engage on the MP. We can cast out a bomb, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. I do have an end up winning this fight very cleanly, though. <laughs> okay, the enemy team is now also swapping quite a few things here. Monkey Hammond. That is very interesting. Anna Zen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in general, right now, I would just be looking to break Winston Bubble and shatter whatever happens to be in front of me. That can work as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, no, That's no, some no. big dick energy right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least he yeah, made it work, so I'll give him that. Be... Yeah. I mean... Not losing the run, which is a bit, bit of a shame. But... Yeah, I mean, you lose your shooting, but in this case, I would now just swap to Winston. But uh, we're sticking to Ryan. Yeah. Monkey. Much better. Mm -hmm. Especially you still have a diva, so... Already have a diva. They're so mobile, it's very hard for you to get value out of Reinhardt. And in the absence of any peeling support, like, their backgrounds were totally free. Yeah. You think, like, um, so... Let's say we, we played Protect the McCree, would I then keep the Ryan? Yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Could do. Uh, well, I often mm -hmm. do with Winston, personally, because he requires a bit less resources from healers, so he can put more resources into McCree. And Winston is, at least, I find him generally a bit better for peeling. And it can also deal with like the yeah. close range threats of like Genji traits or Samra a bit better than a Reinhardt can. 
So I personally yeah. fancy it with a uh, Winston instead of Reinhardt. Yeah. But, but against their old comp, I could see some value in Ryan. Against this comp, uh, it would be Winston. Yeah. Old comp, yeah. Up for debate, but uh, I think a protected McCree comp in general would work well, and most of the emphasis is at least on the McCree, so... Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. This fight is an interesting one, to yeah. say the least. But as you can see, like, uh, Tuxfrag just gets back. He can do lit like nothing about the Hammond going in, he can do nothing about the Winston going in, and he can maybe get the one swing on the Tracer that's about to pass him. Like this is what it's yeah. like that's what I'm trying to say. It's very hard to play Reinhardt against such a mobile comp when you have yeah, like, like more of a long range comp as well. It's a payload but mm -hmm. like this run here, yes, no one fucking goes to this ball, he just died down there, but he would uh, Yeah. That, that's unfortunate for him, you know, but everything like, is just flying what past around. Yeah. You do have a Lucia, so maybe you, you could be able to speed on the support because they don't have Lucia. Could do, but then again, but, uh, your Lucia's play quite defensively. Get fucked. Indeed, <laughs> they still have dives, so your backline is in the goner, so yeah, it's a bit of a, of a rough one. Yeah. Uh, I, have a, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. So like, um, like right now we do all this theory crafting, right, and it's like nice because we can pause the vote and mm -hmm. talk, like we see all the compositions, yada yada yada. Yeah. Um, like, when we when we play games, like. I don't know, sometimes I used to really try to figure out, you know, trying to, like, what's the win condition? Like, for example, I would, you know, like, press tab and try to have similar thoughts as, as we were talking about now. Mm -hmm. And then, like, kind of talk about, like, okay, guys, like, for example, uh, they don't have Lufthio, let's just speed on, on their backline and, and, and try to kill them. Mm -hmm. And try to ignore the flanks as much as possible. But I think, like, during a match, it's really, really hard. And, like, you, like you're kind of useless until you kind of finish your thought process or until you... Mm -hmm finished your thing and i think sometimes you just want to play more intuitive or like you know like you know like if there's an opportunity you can't just be like i'm not going for the opportunity because i'm still thinking about what's the win condition um, you still need to be able to like react quickly or be able to punish mistakes quickly or like yeah. uh, capitalize on opportunities like how do you like i don't know how do you, how do you uh, set that up yeah. well and how do you continue to do that well you mean yeah yeah um in general this is something that i kind of had to get used to myself as well when i was a player it's very handy if either a team captain or a shot caller just literally tells people what to do. So in this case, let's say if you're like the general shot caller and team captain, you could say like, Lucia, you're speed boosting me into their back line. And if they want to know why, then maybe they can ask it later. But during that match, it's very important that people are all on the same page. And like you mentioned, during a match when it's all chaotic and whatnot, you cannot explain all the theory behind it. So it is very important yeah. that you have like one or two persons, like commonly like the shot caller, target caller, and kind of have like the leading role in that to decide what the plan of approach will be, and then people need to like do what they're kind of told to do. And as long as people are on the same page, you should be able to execute your plan well. Now, let's say that the plan that you crafted doesn't work as well as you'd hoped. At least if everyone tried it out properly, you can see that it's maybe flawed in some way and you can look to uh, look to improve it. So it's definitely important that you have like, uh, a bit of a firm stance there and saying what you're doing and how you want to do it. And if things need to be changed, then you can definitely change them. But you don't need to explain like every single bit of theory during a match. That's a bit too much. Yeah, so basically, I don't know. So I'll try to keep it kind of simpler and like, uh, um, I guess, also fast. Concrete. Uh, yeah, you concrete. Mean, very concrete. It's not per se that it has to be like, it doesn't even have to have theoretical something. depth. Yeah, like, too much. Um, yeah. Like, Flips and I used to play together. I was always like a bit timid and a bit maybe uh, like too kind of not firm enough when I needed something. But I could say something very simple like, uh, Flips, you nano boost me this fight. Done, basically. <laughs> Artful and timid in the same word? Wait a minute. Timid, yeah. <laughs> but like, those are the type of things that you can uh, think about. Just say, like, hey, I'm going to do this, and I will need this resource. And then if they want to like get some explanation or some more feedback crafting, do it outside of the game. That's what I would say. Okay. Yeah. So kind of, it's, it's good to have a plan, but you have to keep it practical, like not over mm -hmm. or like not overcomplicated, not to go into theory crafting or like huge theory crafting is like for a that's for like a different moment. If you have like a thought review like this or a team meeting, then you can yeah. definitely do it. But let's say yeah, um, mm -hmm. if you like, let's say that you have like some elaborate plan with your Ana, your Ana like at that moment in time is worried about Hammond, Winston, Tracer, some or Tracer Genji in this case. There's no way she's gonna have attention to keeping you up, keeping herself alive watching for enemy flanks, and then also hearing your free craft. Like, she just needs to know, okay, I need to throw a nade at him when he charges in. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. Right. Well, I think we can play on them. Yeah. Monkey has no jump. Monkey one. Monkey is killing. Alright, we should be able to win this fighter because we're one up, and we do have the 
presence on pale to fly in. We're supposed to break to Genji, right? Yeah. That's a good call. No, oh, it was a Widowmaker at first, I believe. Yeah, it just... Yeah, I wanted to get off Widow there, since they, you know, like... The Hammond and everyone just, like, dives. That's okay. You do have Nano Blade coming up. It's, uh, kind of alright. Your comp is a bit messy right now, so, but I think Genji's still a good pick in this one. Whoops. Yep, there goes a Divam. is well, quite placed again. I like it. <laughs> uh, here, kind of the same thing applies. Um... We killed that Winston as he jumped in with Baby Diva, and uh, Anas and Yats could not get around cover quick enough to escape the Diva bomb, so we got one kill off of that as well. One thing okay. I did instantly notice again, though, is that Lucio, like, you're peeling for the backline very well. It does mean that your frontline has no speed boost, and that's very uh, rough as Reinhardt. They want to, like, kind of play in between the two lines, preferably, where you can both speed your Reinhardt around and maybe peel for your Anna as well where needed. But in this case, you guys are a bit split. 10 to 15 seconds back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just started there. What the fuck? Call is okay. It's the mech, which is a shame, but here, at this point, both your Genji and your Hanzo are standing on top of your team. When you're playing DPS with so much movement and as much potential as, as especially Hanzo who can get the one shots, try and take different angles. Like stand on the high ground or stand on like an off angle where the rest of your team isn't. Because then they'll probably not be facing you a lot of the time. As long as you're somewhat safe, it's a. Uh, mm -hmm. get yeah, more yeah. like. Be more effective. So, like standing up on that bridge area there, like next to the monkey, uh, next to the Ryan shield there. Like yeah, you, you you could as long as you can get out yeah, like okay. uh, in proper time. Uh, over there you'll have a different angle, which means they'll have to face two places like to protect themselves from. When you yeah, get further yeah. back, you can stand in the the other window next to the payload on the high ground next to it. Again, you yeah. can stand on like the far left side uh, here and just shoot from far away. Since he doesn't need to be close at all. Just uh, taking different angles, so that the enemy team is forced to look in multiple directions. She'll get more charge, she'll get more damage, she'll get more opportunities, and so on. Especially important with snipers like Hanzo and Widow. Yeah. Okay, so... Going into this fight, they're gonna have every ult. Indeed. Get with Mines, Nano Blade. They're looking to use a lot of them as well. Nano Blade, Pulse Bomb. And you, Nano, but... Uh... I did have them when they get to it was a bit late. Okay. I think in general so none of us can run hard difficult in this one. Like there's just so little for him to swing out. Yeah. Um I understand you wanna tease your No no though. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's here. Uh was Josh the one who uh is your Anna like in the review right now or not? Yeah, yeah. Tappers, Tappers is just him. Yeah, he's here. Ah, okay. I'm here, guys. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they use like five ultimates. So uh, one, two, three, four, four. four. Yeah, but they're getting close on the hammer lines again. Jesus. Yeah. But if you want to beat there, you'd be a bit much earlier with it. Like when you had the blade, you'd beat right away. Mm -hmm. So you lost like the mech to the pulse bomber, then Hansu to the mines. So, so like after that, I was pr practically lost. Uh, instead of just dragging and point, dragging the damn door because you gotta be held in the door for so long. And yeah. Just getting a good dragon off in the doorway, clearing out some people will allow your team to get, get out, space. get some space. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, like it's okay to drag in the payload if you don't think there's anyone at the door, or you think you can get a kill off it. But in this situation, it'd be much better to use it at the door. Yeah, dragon and man switch, right? Yeah. 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 Here you should probably look to take multiple spawn exits, otherwise you're just gonna get spammed out. Yeah, they have primal, so they're gonna just yeah, fuck you there. Are they, uh, I mean, yeah, you could just go, go into the backline, honestly. Could do it out, yeah, or yeah, you could just play like the... yeah. Right now your comp is a bit like disjointed. You have like two dive yeah, DPS at Diva with a Reinhardt. Yeah, yeah. but you could definitely like. With one or two swaps, like you can either go full goats or more standard dive comp, but that should be uh, netting you much better results against this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's play that though. In general, we are picking stall heroes, but uh, it's going to be a last second test from Tracer and from Hammond, okay? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a tryout. Gonna, yeah, I have some time then. You have some time, yeah. Alright, this is good getting some stall in. Nice patience on the recall. Can prim this out. Mm -hmm. oh, you're on Galante there. Yeah. And you just swap to Bahamut, so there's no way to negate that. You got some picks going now. 
But it might still be rough. Sure. Yeah. And then it's uh, uh, a bit of a stack of us. Yeah. But I wanna watch this again. Yeah, Ryan gets anti gets killed. We come back with Doom Tracer. I tried to get the shatter off, but... Oh, look. You get two picks, but then, like, they just have all the point presence. Your Hammond's not in a fight, your Reinhardt's dead. And the rest cannot pass through the mines. Nah. One thing was there, it was very, very quiet. Like, the only thing I heard was... I killed. Was, yeah, I killed this person. Like, mm -hmm. I killed Lana, I killed Sen, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or Tracer. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I had. Yeah. Yeah, in a, like, in a situation like this, especially when the pillow is getting closer and closer, you gotta be aware of who was on the pillow constantly, who's yeah. gonna come out next, which Indeed. target you're going for, like what's actually happening all the time. Yeah, just especially making sure you always know some. Yeah, always know, uh, like who's going on the pillow, like yeah. who's on the pillow, who's going next. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't like shut down mentally in, yeah. in these um, entire situations. Over time things. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, yeah, like, Target focus camp is very important as well, otherwise mm -hmm. you're gonna get rolled and you can't kill anyone. Mm -hmm. And even dead people can, can come with valuable information all the time, so it's yeah, not an issue yeah. either. Indeed. So what kind of specific callouts would you do? So for example, I, I charge in as Ryan, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'll be like, I got payload, and then my team knows. And then like um, I get I get naded and whooped away, and then I'm... What, what would I say? Would I say I'm cut off, yeah, or like... I can't, yeah, it's just say I yeah. can't contest. Or yeah, I, need help. I always said dropping out, I can always also say Hammond contest, Tracer contest, stuff like that. Um, ideally, like, if it's not too dire yet, you can say I can, test, I can contest for, like, two seconds, and then the other people, people, uh, people can get ready, but if things are looking dire, just say uh, someone contests, or, like, Hammond contests, and at least if they hear it, they know that they need to get their ass in, and if they... If they can't, they can maybe say that they can't, and maybe someone else can pick up, and that's like, hey, my Ryan and Hammond can both not contest, and I'm playing Tracer. Let me get back to payload. Stuff like that. And in terms of callouts, yeah. I mean, you're looking at I mean, potential targets you can kill, but you're also looking for crucial cooldowns, because like, um, in this case where the enemy team is playing Ana, if she uses yeah. both her nade and her sleep, I mean, if you're Lucian, Tracer see an opportunity to go for her, they can fucking go for her. Yeah, those two are vulnerable here, because mm -hmm. they're not going to have much appeal from any of these tanks, most likely. Mm -hmm. Maybe the monkey a little bit, but then he has to expand his sleep yeah. for that. I don't think I don't think he wants to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, like, if if for example you you uh, haven't communicated, I can contest for for a little while, or you Reinhardt, mm -hmm. you, then maybe uh, Doom and Trace can coordinate a dive on the backline, since their backline is quite vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So. Keeping a composure during these uh, these overtime phases uh, can be quite valuable. Indeed, Have, being very consistent yeah. in your comms and in your performance, which kind of go hand in hand at times, it's uh, very important to look to uh, be very stable in those. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Other than that, okay. any other questions on King's Row or not really? Mm. I don't have any really. Uh, okay, me neither. We can instantly go into the next map. Uh, one thing I want to say though, you, on last point, you were like indecisive with changing your comp. You stuck to your Ryan for the whole for the whole duration of the last phase, while we still have a diva. Mm -hmm. So like Ryan diva, that's not a good combo at all. So like even if you have shatter, sometimes it might be more yeah. beneficial to just. Yeah. Yeah, they just use sit and then swap right away, or just swap even if with the shadow. Because, because of maybe what they have here, but yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Having a messy comp like this, it's gonna... It's detrimental, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, gonna cripple you quite a bit. I don't really know so why. You don't I really have a plan, really, you know? Mm -hmm. and whatever, but... Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have both offense and defense now, so we can go into Hanamura. Yeah. Like a couple minutes forward. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we're playing a spam composition here. That's yeah, good enough. Yeah, bunker. <laughs> bunker comp. Yeah, we, we usually we're run the spam like. We've got them. Like, what a perspective right here. Nice. Yeah, um, nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, we use an early shift, but uh. <laughs> Right, but let's look at the comp for a bit. Uh, can we quickly pause? Yes. Okay.
So, so yeah, uh, for the gears. We got a bunker. Mm-hmm. All right. So um, I think like the McCree pick in these days it can work. Uh, the junk is like a classic bunker pick. The uh, the other like supports and tanks are all fine. Uh, I've not seen McCree used in bunker that much, but I like he can work if the enemy aggresses onto him. But as soon as they try to aggress on the point, I think there might be other more beneficial options. I don't know how you feel about it. But... Mm, yeah. Like this comp, we, I don't know like where we came up with the idea, but mm-hmm. I think it was kind of like more of a, that, you know, the comp is kind of balanced, you know? Like, let's say they run dive or something, you know, we're, you know, mm-hmm. and like we're equipped to like deal with it. And at the same time, you know, like if they run goats, we have a junk cred, you know, and like it's yeah. kind of more, you know, like it's a stable comp, yeah. Yeah, instead of just putting all, you know, your eggs in one basket, you know, we kind of like balanced it out to like, so we don't like just get rolled and then snowball mm-hmm. into second point. Yeah. Kind of thing. Like I said, I'm, I don't think it's like per se bad. It's something that I haven't seen that often. Like uh, that often. I know a lot of, like we used to play with Widowmaker back in the day. A lot of people these days played with Hanzo or Ash to get some extra like spam and point presence going. That's interesting yeah. anyways. One thing I want to highlight though, um, if the enemy team ever takes point, it'll be your diva's job to contest first, preferably with double healing, and without using cooldowns initially, and then you can stall for a bit, and then as soon as you have to fly out, you can drop your RSN, and then heal a bit on your RSN, and heal your diva up a bit, and then when the rest is forced to drop, you can maybe put your diva back in, but by that time you should hopefully have confirmed a kill or two. Yeah, yeah. We can play from here on, I would say. Hmm. Yeah, if they uh, go to point, you just put your diva on it, mm-hmm. and uh, put the beam on her as well. Yeah, the heal. So she won't get fucked by like a tracer or whatever. Mm-hmm. If she has a beam on her, she will always have armor up, so she shouldn't, shouldn't take too much armor from the tracer. That's um, the reason also, why it's important to have a beam on the diva. Also, uh, Ash is, is of course also uh, a good pick uh, instead of McCree. I like McCree a lot for. When you're playing against comps that are gonna, gonna really like go hard on you, but Ash fall, like functions same a lot of the way, um, except the dynamite and and her ult I think are a lot better suited against goats. And this is a yeah. map where yeah. you'd very often see goats. So mm-hmm. preferably, I'd honestly say going Ash here. Also, she can get to the roof super easily and yeah. get some other angles. So I'd say Ash is uh, probably the preferable pick in this situation mm-hmm. if you if you do play her. Yeah. yeah, and you can use the boot pretty well as well, mm. you know, mm. with the coach gun, if they Indeed. die or, you know, push on to us. Well, I mean, I think we really also, I think McCree is nice against Sombra, because I, I think one of really strong win condition against this bunker comp- composition is really EMP, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't rely, although the EMP is going to be very strong, as you can't reliably flashbang a Sombra. No, yeah. not at all. You should count on it. Uh, Generally, against yeah, Sombra. Uh, like, pick heroes that do not need their abilities too much at all times to survive. And Ash can function quite well against Sombra, McCree can, Winston can. But, uh, like, as Flipsy mentioned, it's it's really hard to counteract every EMP Diva bomb combination with one McCree. <laughs> That's a bit <laughs> yeah. much. Also, yeah. one thing I just wanted to note, uh, I'd probably pick a Brig instead of a Junkrat. Could do. Mm. Um, I prefer like the, the double uh, spam because you're like, it's like really like apt at countering goats, so you're kind of gonna keep your distance anyways. In this case, yeah. if you're expecting dive, you may put in a brick, yeah, but I don't think that's like the initial premise of the comp. Yeah, we yeah, want to agree. Can, like, like it's something risky. For both comps, you know, mm-hmm. like it, something it, for goats and something for dive. yeah. It's kind of, and it's kind of very like against some teams, you know, they play like dive into it or something, and then it's like kind of more up to me, like on my creator, like you know, do something. But then again, we met some teams that like they become One really indecisive. Yeah, kind of like they run at least, you know, Ryan or something, mm-hmm. and they go like, you know, they go from their perspective, right side, you know, mm-hmm. when they come out of the choke, and they become like super, like, they don't know what to do, and then the Junkrat just spams them, and we were like able mm-hmm. to get, you know, like, 30 second tires or something, yeah. and like, win with that, instead, like, and then yeah. like, the McCree doesn't really do anything there, but then mm-hmm. again, against other stuff, he does. It depends per team, yeah, but in general, it's always handy to uh, <laughs> have your own things going, if you will. Regardless of whether the enemy team makes a mistake or not. Yeah. Alright. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's watch some game. Okay, good pick there so to set off. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's okay. Getting the flap to do a bit of scouting is okay, but we need to think about getting back on high ground. Because right now, we cannot get back. Yeah, right now we're forced to drop on point using cooldowns. Yeah. And we're not yeah, healing yeah, our yeah, like point. Yeah, we're a bit slow in our rotations, and uh, <laughs> we're not really rotating as well we could maybe do. 
Yeah, what happened there, really? Um, Diva flew up to scout for the Mercy, uh, then drops on low ground, then is forced to use her boosters to get on point, where everyone is now going to group up. Yeah, okay. And when the Diva goes, they engage. Yeah, so Diva used her boosters here, they all go in. Uh, we're all forced to drop off, so they control Hagen, we're all on point. Some of having used cooldowns, we lose one. Uh, take one back again. Take two, the, okay. Uh, can you quickly pause? Okay, so we're getting like a lot of random kills here, but your D.Va is not blocking any type of spam damage. She's chasing a Tracer. Uh, I don't know, uh, like, it is a tryout. The D.Va did uh, save the Senyata when he dropped from here. A tiny bit. Point. But uh, no, 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 he saved him. She saved him hard. Yeah, okay, but like after that, there's like, nothing yeah, eating this far spam. Yeah, this part is good, but from here on, it's like a bit risky because you're never eating far spam. I would say Honestly, you don't want to... I cannot see shit from this perspective, so I'm... It's a bit weird, in, but... but let's like watch it play out and watch where the diva goes. She's going to be on the right side where currently we'll see Summer and we'll see Tracer in a second. Yeah, okay, uh, there. that's questionable, very questionable. Yeah. You kill him, but they you should killed have her translocator there. You should have mm -hmm. like, Indeed. back in this <laughs> mini back there, I think. Indeed. In general, you want to have your McCree, of course, to deal with that Summer, or maybe even a Junkrat trap, but uh, diva's job here is to really deal with the Fire Mercy. And to maybe yeah. uh, like make sure when the Hammond Paul drives something up, that you can matrix whoever gets focused. Yeah. <laughs> but I keep, you don't you should never play split when you're in a bunker comp. Indeed. <laughs> I do end up cleaning up with some good DPS frags. Ooh, you lose that again. That's not lucky. That's not nice. And we also. Uh, we could maybe resin, or do we use resin already? I'm sure, but... I think he... Oh, I did, yeah. I don't know. I'm here. Okay, Lucia. nice. Yeah. i go for Lucia. Um, it, in order to get back on point soon, yeah, but... You're worrying a lot about maybe your damage output now. Because you're not going to have to reposition. Yeah. Also, Tux, uh, save yeah. your uh, Orisa 4 to 5 when you have to contest point. It's very helpful. Yeah. You can just use Fortify when you're taking a lot of pressure. Against... Or, when, uh, or against a far concussive people. blast, but it's not uh, mm, ideally you want Diva to you contest can first. Hold them one to Indeed. mitigate that. You're not going to be able to next patch, but. Indeed. So. But not... in general, yeah. You want Diva to contest first, get some healing, and then you want to drop and use Fortify when things get nasty. That's how you buy time on the point. So right now, they just kind of take it for free. Yeah, mm -hmm. now we have like three people here on point. Mm -hmm. Then we have. Two here on high ground, so we're quite split. So they're gonna just drive here, I think. And we... They're probably just gonna push in wherever they yeah. want. Yeah, we're very split. They're mm -hmm. gonna lose one. Is Valkyrie okay? The question is, are we gonna get this rock up? Dude, what is this fucking POE? I can see one person. <laughs> Happens. What the fuck, man? <laughs> and they're uh... really just exactly helping mm -hmm. this map. Indeed. Can we, okay, we do ate the uh, pulse bomb. We did not get the res off with Seymour, oh. did we? I didn't see the high noon because of the perspective. Yeah, unlucky. Yeah, I, I well, let's play it out. I think the person was streaming in this one as well, so he wasn't paying that close attention, but we can work yeah. with what we have. Okay, we get the res off. There's Valk. It's an EMP. Now a lot of things come in. <laughs> right now, as you can see, we got pushed back so far that we cannot really recontest point effectively. If we had like a very good clean setup and positioning, we could have rotated contestants quite easily. Right now we're like forced to kind of like drip in and out of the point, or uh, mostly into the point, and not even get out alive, because our initial setup was not really uh, ideal. It's also not the end of the world to give up a tick. Indeed. Can you even give up two ticks? You need to stabilize. Can give up two ticks. For example, we're gonna have to go eat soonish, so uh, if you can just take over. Uh, That's okay. Take over. Uh, like you can do that. Cool. cool. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we are swapping to a good comp right now, though. Like um. I'll just young to control if you don't mind. Whoop. Um, okay, so with the Junkrat Tower, we can definitely win one fight, which is still good. Going for the Genji is okay. They are also swapping their comp a lot, though. And the one thing I'm instantly noticing, and I'm gonna dive this. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're honest playing all the way in the back, right? I imagine, right? Yeah, should be. Yeah. Uh, you should be left stairs, I think. Yeah, like on the low stairs near the spawn. It's generally a good position because it makes it so that they uh, that the enemy team can't really like dive you easily because you always have to spawn nearby and they need to invest like more than even one cooldown to get to you. I'd say at the top of the stairs to be honest, so you can get peeled and uh, you can get easier offensive nades. Here kind yeah, of right yeah. 
yeah, yeah. could do. But so you can get better easy nades. True. But in this case, I think like the crumb position is also kind of fine because it makes it so that um, if they want to dive you, then they automatically have to like really overextend in their back lines, just free as free as ever could be. True. Yeah, but right now they can't really dive you, so for when they're not in, mm -hmm. in the actual like square, you can stand up on the stairs maybe. Yeah, it could do yeah, for now, but then you can never rotate. Can... Dangerous higher position. I think it's okay to drop down, you have to be careful always yeah. against Sombra. Also, very, very dangerous spot to go. If they're Divas, like, spot you when you're using Tyre. Uh, yeah. Yeah, go if, back five seconds. Five seconds. <laughs> if they're a, if they're Diva, like, spot you when you're using Tyre, it's perfectly fine to solo ultra, I would say. Yeah. Look at the trace in the bottom corner. Kill soon, dies. Trap. Yeah, <laughs> just put a trap down, I imagine. We do get, like, a lot of kills in the back line. We got, like, uh, we got the Zen down. The Ana's still alive, but doesn't give too many fucks. And then we just get a lot of DPS and Diva kills, that's good. Am my join control for a bit here? Go for it. Um, so, the other positioning here I like because uh, one, you get easy nades, two, you can get easy field, and since you have a junk rat, like, if they die of you, you can just fall back, you literally should be able to heal you, and then you can, you, junk rat can spam them tanks. You sweet, but, um,. <laughs> So you just tire get down now. Mm -hmm. Such a scrappy fight to be honest. Yeah, yeah we're everyone super split. Indeed, but yeah. because the enemy team has like no means of peeling for their backline, they just lose the backline for free. <laughs> like Anna's already yeah, dead and we're gonna see Zen drop in two seconds. Yeah, he's gonna drop right there. Mm -hmm. So now it's like an equal trade in theory, but they have yeah. no supports. Yeah, so they yeah, so won't be able to lose since they have a spawn advantage. Mm -hmm. way. Yeah, you just even play the time here, time. even if if you're even if you're losing, just play the time, play the corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, spawn advantage. So yeah, it's just a, it's just a good clean up in this easily. Indeed, just a solid clean up. <laughs> even without like the tr kill and trace, you should have been more than fine. Yep. No, you shouldn't be so. Uh, can we quick quick pause? Yeah. 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 yeah yep. I have a, I have a question. So. Um. We 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 have dive, mm -hmm. and yeah. and they have dive right. Mm, but they yes, have a uh, uh, zen sombra, zen sombra. Yeah. yeah. So super diveable, right? Mm -hmm. So like in this perspective, right? We they went top left from our point, from defender's point of view, right? Yeah, like yeah. This little thing. Right here. Yeah. And like or around here, whatever. I feel like when I when I play dive versus dive, like like dive is not a frontline composition, right? But yeah. I still like to put early pressure into this little Definitely. choke mm -hmm. just to force the resources. Yeah, that's good, um, yeah. Like, oh, also, well. you'd, say, you'd say it's worth it. Like, e like, even if I pop my bubble and just try to force resources and make it expensive for them to rush it, through, even yeah. though I'm, like, I'm not diving or, like, you know, I'm kind of You're playing... not committing, but that's okay. Uh, like, yeah. if you, uh, like, the first cross, like, where you have the little hallway with the uh, two windows on the outside, like, that's still, like, a very good spot to stand because it's the most heavily contested point in the entire map. Like, everyone funnels through the little hallway. If yeah. people will be going through main, they just give up all high ground control. If they go, like, all the way around left, you can instantly just reset to another high ground, and it's fine. But, like, if you even if you use your bubble there and you force some of their resources, firstly, they do not have illusion. They do not have any peels. They're forced to expend resources and take a lot of damage when moving through. And if you do that, together with your D.Va, you'll farm your D.Va bomb and your Winston in which case you A deal, like, free damage. And on top of that, you should be able to stall very effectively. And seeing as they do not have Lucia and they do not have spawn advantage, it should be very easy to clean up then. It's definitely worth it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, ideally what they would want to do is they want to have this high ground. Or yeah. this high ground for that matter. Yeah. This yeah. this one's more preferable, but either works. Mm -hmm. So, you want to deny them that. Have it for free can be... Mm -hmm. It's good. Indeed, you don't want to give it up for free. Yeah. Like when they respawn, respawning, you have full map control, right? So you can just take whatever position you want, really. Indeed. It's a nice POV. I like it. Yeah, great POV. <laughs> this, great this reminds POV. me of my Minecraft houses, where I would put torches on the edges. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, uh, what is he? I'm not sure. <laughs> I think he wants to entertain his uh, Twitch chat, but it's fine. I'm this, actually uh, fucking baffled. This is a more uh, workable POV though. This is gonna be funny because now he's gonna actually uh... miss a fight. He's gonna miss a lot of this fight because he's <laughs> POVing this. So we couldn't really see too much. I think the initial setup was kind of okay, but you could have had more split high ground control where you didn't have all position on the first high ground on the with four people on the central high ground. You could have maybe split up a bit, but it's fine. 
There, there's an ad for vitamin drink playing on the screen. Yeah. What? Not for me? <laughs> I don't see that either. <laughs> ah, ah, okay, now it's it. <laughs> don't expect too much of my eyesight, please. Yeah. There we Can go we again. <laughs> Remove <Yeah>. us, friend. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to. Yeah, he's trying to. All right, I had no idea what happened. Uh, yeah, our high ground controls a bit. Like, uh, we put a bit too much emphasis on the central high ground. We maybe had one or two people split, but we do end up winning the fight. So I guess props there. And Fightsman Drunk is probably going to stop uh, logging on and off. So that should be nice. I have a question. Yeah. Um, um, if they try to force point in dive v dive on the, in this situation, mm -hmm. who is like who should try to touch? Um, in general, Eva's always the best one to touch in rotation with Winston, but if they truly, truly want to walk on point, you just kill their backline for free still. So <laughs> I don't I don't know who um who recorded this VOD, but whoever did you can tell them that you can just type slash hide chat in the mm -hmm. chat too. Always handy. <laughs> hide it. Or go you to know. your social settings, yeah. But yeah, if they like want to walk on point. Type yeah. slash hide chat. Indeed. But um in this case, like if they want to walk on point, it's going to take them a long time because they have a very immobile backline. So, in that case, you can probably send Winston and Genji off, like onto their backline, just kill them for free. Maybe Winston Tracer, depending on how much resource you would need. In that case, it would be preferable if, like, um, Diva would stay a bit further back because they do have some red Tracer that will look to fuck up your backline. So, I think having some sort of peel and some sort of damage mitigation there is handy. Yeah. Uh, I would do it. I always find it hard with Winston. Like, I'm often able to split their. Backline, mm -hmm. but then like someone touches point, and then it's like, well, should I touch or should I keep the pressure on the backline? Uh, depends very much on your uh, setup. If you can like kill one of the backline, it's good. Uh, if you're just like trying to keep the backline occupied, then you can definitely just take your time on like splitting them up and then get back to your team. Because yeah. let's say if you drop a bubble over the Ana, force her to like not heal her team. If then people start to contest point, well, maybe you can just join that fight on point and get some damage before the Ana can heal people. It really depends on what map you're playing, how you're playing, like uh, how you're dividing your positioning, but also how you generally generally play. Like if you have a very aggressive off tank player, it might not be too handy to have a super aggressive main tank player as well. It's like very nitty gritty things. Yeah. Okay. We can play a skit. Well, if I can see what's going on now, that is a very questionable. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. to say, yeah. but, but Box didn't see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, then uh, this POV is so. Yeah. so I mean, cool. at least we hit from the dropping MP. down fast uh, and hiding from the MP. You get MP, the enemy team isn't ready for the MP. It looks yeah. like, but you managed to just get away and get out. Which yeah, or at least you hit the background so she won't get MP yeah. with the rest of the yep. team. So that's good. By him. Nice beat. And your arm did not get impeded either, so he could, I don't know, have a need save if mm -hmm. they need it. Not for now, though. I'm hacked. Don't, no one uh, needs for now. No. Uh, there is now, I think this is good, like, getting control of the high guns and forcing their uh, support ults, but we do have to think about our backline now. We are being pressured a lot now. Yeah. Prime Rage is a bit early. Might be able to make it work, though. Get two kills. I have no clue what's going on in the bottom. Do you end yeah, up cleaning it up again? I, I have no clue. Mm. Uh, I think I was just chasing the supports in the bottom. Yeah, it seems like it, yeah. And so is Diva, yeah, so getting work on it. Trends, so. yeah, I mean, they use Nano Trans EMP Pulse Bomb. They formed up to a um, Winston Old by now with the Nano Boost supports. And we okay, just use the Trans EMP Pulse Bomb. You have free Nano Boost. Mm -hmm. uh, Playing Ana Mercy. Antigo's really composition. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Their composition's fucking. Yeah. Man. Like the Ana Mercy can work like against very tank heavy compositions, but you got guys are just playing two to two dive, so. Alright, uh, one thing I want to highlight though, can you pause real quick? Yeah. A lot of teams struggle like. Take control, yeah, okay, sure. Uh, I'm, gonna I'm gonna go eat in a bit though. Okay, so. then I'll uh, just yoink it from here. Um, A lot of teams struggle to execute some sort of dive against this Mercy Ana setup. In theory, like you would say, oh, they have no supportive ult, so we just win it very cleanly because we have better ults and whatnot. But a lot of teams still struggle to execute a dive here. Um, I don't remember by hard way you struggle with it. One of the things that's always handy to do if you're playing dive against Mercy Ana is force a decision from the uh, Mercy. That means you want to have 
like a bit of split target focus at first, having one person focus down the other, and then, for instance, one person focus down the McCree in this case, and then make the Mercy decide between like one or the other. In this case, the McCree might play with the other, but you can always like focus their Genji who is going in for your backline. And then when the Mercy decides to fly in, that's when you can decide what target you're focusing. If they're going, if the Mercy is going to heal their backline, you can abandon the backline and focus their frontline. And vice versa, if their Mercy's like living the Ana in order to heal the frontline, they need to have a free Ana kill. It's one of the things you always want to keep in mind when a force that Mercy um, to make a rough decision. Can I pass a sec? Yeah. You can you could just like pressure like you focus the Mercy and the M the Ana so she can't heal her. That if you, but if it's you only when the Mercy decision. doesn't have her fly. Yeah, like if if she has fly though, where she's gonna go you can't go for the back, right? Because I mean most, most likely not much. If this. But it's really yeah, hard to, because uh, uh, like, the Mercy has a two second flight cooldown, and on top of that, your Matrix only lasts for two seconds, so it's like a very narrow window of time that mm. you can work in. It can work, but you're, like, you need to have the initial perfect positioning and setup without using your own cooldowns, then dropping on them, Matrixing them, and then killing them in the process with your own cooldowns again. It can work, but it's very meticulous. Yeah. I think what you should do is just abuse that you have speed and they don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somehow the monkey can do that to the bomb though. Yeah, the, the sure bomb just, just landed inside the monkey bubble, and I think he thought that he would have cl like cleverly bubbled it off, but it got inside. <laughs> I think you should just abuse the speed boost. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, at this point, Arjo, wouldn't you say that even using monkey ult against the supports wouldn't be bad because they have nothing like to save themselves? I mean, using I mean, one ult to keep two of them busy is perfectly fine. Sleep you, yeah. yeah. Like, if you just keep them busy, that's fine enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have no defense ones here. That would keep them busy enough, long enough to do, you just win the fight. Yeah, and if you'd be able to abuse it. That's definitely felt, like fine enough, yeah. But you have to indeed watch for cooldowns, because mostly when people play McCree, they played with their backline, and the honest has, like her sleep up. So you're looking at a potential double stun with damage boost. Right. So that's as long as um, you don't get slapped, I think it's fine. You won't die from... From one Flash stun, right no, but you will feed a fuck ton of ult charge in the process and you might have to get back very soon afterwards. True. So you're looking at like at least 500 damage that you're taking effectively, if not more. Probably more, yeah. They're gonna damage with right click and whatnot. Damage with right click and Ana shooting it. I hate when I primal. <laughs> but like stunned and then it's like I'm solo, I have to get out. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, if you engage with primal, kind of depends on how you play it out, but yeah. It is like so definitely they have balance. Balance. Balance, so they have all of them. I mean, we yeah. have like a lot of ults on both teams. My bubble to yeah. farm a nano blade, but we'll see how things go. <laughs> yeah, so they're gonna nano blade. Ish. Maybe get with bomb or Valk. You die a bit earlier there with Primal Rage, and so okay. I don't know exactly what happened there because we can see, but it's not acceptable as two them. tanks to die with both your ults yeah. up. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Diva, problem, Diva got like uh, got killed out of mech. Yeah, uh, both you and your Diva, I would say. Back up, back up a bit. Back up a bit, yeah. We get a nanoblade in backline. This is good. I mean, back up with the VOD. Oh, the like, VOD, sorry. Trading nanoblades here. Uh, well, like, we're like this. They did before them. Tanks die. Okay. Uh, they're gonna engage now and our tanks are gonna die. I think we're like off sync a bit. Mm -hmm. It seemed like it. you were going in deep for the left side. Diva's getting ready, but you got stunned, didn't you? Like, like yeah, yeah. flash banged. Uh, flash banged. Too greedy. There was no DM for the right click, mm -hmm. so you just died. Yeah. And then your Diva threw out her bomb and then got killed as Baby Diva here. A yeah, bit off sync there, yeah. yeah. Out of sync. Yeah, and you, I don't think you respected the McCree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I messed that up a bit. I was yeah, waiting. Just... I think. But we do I, don't, I don't even think I popped a bubble there. Like, oh, that's a, bit, is... that's a bit messy. This is classical of dive where tanks run away from the support. And the you kill that wiped and that, yeah, and that favors you every time on the fin. Mm -hmm. I guess Stan's just popped off with Nano Blade though. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Nano Blade against a McCree without a flashbang is <laughs> bye bye yeah, McCree. Nice knowing you. Yeah. My death was not in vain. <laughs> <laughs> right, now it's just like uh, kind of a clean up first. Should be fine enough here. Yeah, they are no defensive ult, so they you could be just Nano Blade for free. Yeah. So. <laughs> Alright. Okay, we need to get target focus on this Mercy. I think, like, uh, your Diva's doing a good job of chasing her off the high ground and forcing a pincer move, like, the Mercy's for free now, okay, we're not having that. Right now, this Mercy's for us to fly into one, two, three, and one person coming back from spawn, people. So, as yeah, soon as you're, like, Diva... Probably, she's half, yeah, from Diva, so... Yeah, so, like, if your Diva or 
whomever just like forces her to move like into a pincer position or into a pincer movement, pokes it down. He's he's calling it, calling for mercy, calling for mercy. No one's shooting to mercy. And now we get to it. It took a while. Yeah. Either way, I'm gonna go eat. So right. good luck with Thanks the for your uh, input, mine. though. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, dude. I'll be back in maybe like twenty, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. See ya. In the meantime, I will just talk very greatly about supports. Uh, any questions about your home or at defensive for or not really? I'll just leave the session going so we can keep cool, cool. it. Yeah. yeah. I don't have any questions. I think I think attack will be interesting too because I think we'll struggle yeah. a lot with uh, second will. point. It's going to be an overtime push. Oh yeah, assembling heroes. We can skip that. <laughs> Okay, so they have May Goats. We're running uh, a dive without Torbjorn. I like it. I was about to say we're not sinking to the Doom, but are we okay? That's just pretty good. <laughs> May Goats, okay. Right, so there's a couple things. Um, it's pretty rough to run a dive composition against this. Main thing that you do want to do here, um, the May Comp is of course very unique in that sense, and it's definitely one of the things you want to play around. In general, having more range and or more mobility is really good. So your composition right now is decent, but you could also opt to have some like an Ash or a Widowmaker to be, maybe put some range threat in there. But you should have the mobility to work around the May, but it's going to be a bit challenging to run dive against this. We'll see how we end up doing it. Right here we gotta like uh, kind of think about some things because we Winston just dumped like jumped into here. Your diva's still here, and your supports are still in the choke. We have to definitely work around our rotations here because there's no way that we can help our tanks in this current position. Uh, yeah, Tux Fragger dies. Your diva's kind of probably lose mech. Oh, she doesn't. Nice. She gets walled off here though. How do we get all these kills? <laughs> we don't know. If it's <laughs> too carry, it'd be hard. No, uh, it's not even like uh, it's not even like that. You made a mistake. I'm just wondering like how you got those kills because it shouldn't be a thing. Like, you do not have healing from supports, you do not have damage amp. Maybe in the nade. Uh, I think it was the nade, honestly. The nade? Okay. Yeah. In that case, it was a clutch nade, but still, we were going, like, very deep, and there was no way our tanks could get, like, support from my healers here. With us, Winston, we do end up losing D.Va, but we luckily, like, confirmed the kills, but that fight was, approach um, was very messy. In this case... maybe go back to the start of the fight? So, sure. maybe... Because I have a few questions. Um, yeah. Because, like, I, I don't, like... For me, there's like about three things I, I, I would like to do as Winston. Like either I jump right side deep, like mm -hmm. as a hard dive, because that's usually where the healers are, mm -hmm. um, which is like kind of high risk, high reward. Or like what I did there was like just jump through the window, you know, like claim spaces because they don't have the mobility to like contest me there, like mm -hmm. touch point early, you know, kind of force them yeah. back, create space, make like loosen up the choke. Mm -hmm. And like the third one, not, but I think this is more of a ladder strat, it's just like straight up jump point, force them around, pop a bubble, and then try to somehow jump out again, just to, mm -hmm. again, loosen up the choke. The best um, thing you can do is, um, like, take positioning um, where you're not instantly, like, in fighting range, but you want to, like, drop on the enemy team without using your own cooldowns, like, specifically your jump, so you can force some cooldowns or maybe even get a kill, and then when things get nasty, you can jump back out. Like, jumping in with uh, Winston, like, as an engagement, is super risky. Traditionally has been. Yeah. And because everything that counts as Winston ever has been buffed over the past six seasons, if not more, it's ultra risky. So if you're looking to engage with Winston, it's almost always, like, going to be uh, take map control first, then drop onto the enemy team without using your own cooldowns. They so what, jump what jumps up. would you use to, to take map control? Like, one, one is through the window, top left, right? Uh, one second, I'm going to put map up for you. Like, having one person control window is fine, but be but because the enemy team is not contesting it very hard, it's like having one person go for the balcony is okay. So let's put a one here. If the enemy team is, like, uh, holding near the point, you can definitely have one on the scaffold. You can look for, like, bridge slash apartment and drop through there. And here you can kind of see, like, um, if the enemy team is, like, really holding around the point, you can maybe take the left side here. But if you have any of, like, these positions there and the enemy is somewhat close, you can drop on them without using, like, your bubble or, like, without using your jump get some damage in, you might even be able to stay on the high ground for some time, just avoiding all types of damage. Then you drop on them, and when things get nasty, yeah, sure, then you can maybe uh, like jump out again, or even you can confirm a kill if things really need to uh, be confirmed. But jumping in with Winston against a comp like that is basically just uh, an al almost a death sentence, unless you uh, okay. have some uh, things going up. So like from, from, I could jump balcony, right? 
Um, if like, yeah, let's balcony. say they hold choke, they hold choke really, really hard. Like, I can jump balcony because I can go through the window. I can go from choke. Could or do, yeah. I can... But uh, having one like the balcony, this is not too relevant because they all rotate to the right side. So like, you're holding a position that's not contested and not beneficial for yourself. So going for the like the scaffold, the high ground around the point is probably the best thing alongside bridge in our apartments. Okay. <laughs> Like right. the scaffold above the point, not like on the on the on the right side, from uh, attackers attacker's point of view. Uh, I just used like the what's called the phrasing that the map used. So that would be this red marker here. Scaffold. Okay. So for example, you would walk up choke and then say we jump on on the scaffold, wait for your jump cooldown, and then you can you know do the like the nice engage where you have that probably jump. Out I mean, like above. you have to see if they hold the choke really aggressively, then you cannot instantly jump to the scaffold. Then you might like take one jump to the balcony and see what they do. But yeah. um, if you're playing like dive against this, it's not a shame to use like one or two jumps just to set up. Because otherwise, yeah. like if you're if you're like rushing this too much and you'll lose a few fights, then you're playing against a goat comp that has four ultimates up and you're never going to fucking kill that. So you need to be very meticulous in your dive setup. Okay. All right. Here in this case, I think this is like pretty good for some tension on point and I may be going for something in the backline, but we do get chased hardcore by their, uh, by their diva. We're once again a bit split here. It's a bit rough um, to like forego all type of high ground control, I would say. I'd definitely look at controlling some sort of high ground that can go around far left over main. But all walking through like this little area here means we're giving up all high ground control. Now as you can see, we're taking some damage. We're diving in, nice. But whoever, like, uh, they just all drop simultaneously almost, and then they just hardcore focus you down. I also think that in this situation, like, Playing, play, like not playing for the fight favors you, just playing for the ults because you're closer anyway. Mm -hmm. To all your ults, just you, playing you around the first them, fight. jumping away, keeping yeah. them off you while you form ult. You can just kind of like take a very chill fight without ever committing and just farm your nanoblade EMP diva bomb. Yeah. The enemy team like does a dry push win. with yeah. a dry push, but then like a dry push in which you don't feed any ult charge preferably. Hmm. You don't want to fight yeah, against you don't, you don't want to take a straight fight against goats. Yeah. They feed so much ult. Alright, so we throw out the diva bomb. EMP comes in, nice. Do lose our own wins again, that's unlucky. So now we have to kind of, like, we have to decide for ourselves, do we want to take this fight? If it's a yes, you're popping up the Nanoblade. But you have to be super fucking quick here, okay, we're too late. Um, against Goats, like, on any 2CP map, like, the second point, it's super hard to uh, cap the, like, entire point, so you definitely need to be very quick in confirming your kills. If you'd, like, trade two for one, you have to make up your mind whether or not you want to push it. If it's a yes, then you're popping out that nanoblade and you want to confirm those kills, because the enemy team will be coming back soon and they're fucking goats, so they're gonna stall for a bit. So, in this case, uh, now it's, like, two for two, now it's a reset time. Our beat drop was just a tiny bit off, sadly. Oh, wait, that's their beat drop, sorry. But we have to be, like, very decisive in what we want to do, because now we're just, like, kind of trading back and forth. We use the EMP Diva Bomb, okay, sure. But we're not, like, getting anything out of it. We have, like, no point progress going. And as you can see, now we're fighting against Grav, Deep Bomb, Shatter, Brick Rally. I think M team is playing quite close now. We will still have to claim this Harkon, by the way. Like, we cannot just walk underneath and expect our backline not to get dropped on. Uh, Summer thing chased, okay. If you can get it alive, you just buy a lot of time and keeping them busy. They're using Riley, get one kill, it's crucial. Shadow comes in. You have to think about using ults here, okay? Genji dies. It's probably a reset by now because you do not have Nano Blade. Also, careful going too much around the walls when you're on a sitting main. So, well, she doesn't have side left. Okay, so once again, the fight planning was not too meticulous here. We're not sure where they want to take this fight. We use Primal Rage, okay? Now we're wondering what we're going to do. We don't seem to be too sure, and it's kind of all over the place. <laughs> right, you get one kill, nice. Now, you will still have Nanoblade, which you definitely want to use at some point. And you also have a Diva Bomb, or uh, with EMP again. <laughs> okay, once again, yeah, this jump is a bit risky, your team is not really instantly able to follow up on you. We do get the Nanoblade off, but he just gets... Otherwise, your own EMP. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it was okay. Own EMP. Yeah, um, what you want to do, like having a Nanoblade combo is good, but you want to also have this little combo here. I want to make sure you do use them in that order, essentially, so that you actually combo the two, because yeah. it's going to be very hard to actually dislodge an enemy team otherwise. Sorry, and now, once you use that 
like it's kind of a thing of team communication now with trials that might be a bit difficult, but you definitely want to be able to turn confirm this fight and make sure that when you throw that MP, you want to have that div bomb value going in. Because by the time they come back, your div bomb means that they're going to grab you for free, like this. And on top of that, it's also the case where um, they will now return with all type of shielding because they do not, they're not hacked anymore, so you cannot get value out of the div bomb. Alright, they pick Sulpex and they use a lot of support else, we lose a Sombra. Uh, once again, it's very hard to push into this because we're just not like uh, very clean and committive on our um, ultimates on top of that. The composition we're running, I think it's like admirable to play different types of compositions than GOATs, but it's really hard to actually play a successful dive on a 2CP map against their team right now. You have to be like ultra fucking clean. We're gonna swap. Nice. So are you going for your own goat's mirror now, or...? Yeah, uh, okay. I think so. Classic EU. Alright, does mean, however, they do not have a diva, so we should be able to get a lot of spam damage from Sanyata and our own diva Zarya. However, they do have a lot of ults coming up, so we might have to take some dry fights here. So we basically swapped our entire composition around, bearing Lucio and Diva. So we're being pushed. We can probably take a fight kind of dry here. We need to get some ultras out of this now. That's uh, okay enough. It wasn't ideal. We could have maybe forced some more, but at least we forced two ults out of them. Got some extra progress going on our own. What do you think are uh, things you can do to make it a bit easier to go through that choke? Um, <laughs> I can tell you, people have been like wanting for Hanamore to get reworked on that specific choke for ages now. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> it's difficult, like, it's just a very difficult thing to push through. Uh, well, you way. just play Paris instead, because the yeah. last point is a better version of this. What you could do, is what you're doing right now, is rotating to this Hargams, but you have to be mindful that your backline doesn't get split off now, and pin search. And we're once again very split, we do get two kills now. But we could have also been punished there, both teams split up a lot, and either one could have been punished. In this case, you were being uh, victorious, but... It could have very well gone otherwise. Rotating to the high ground, like around here, is fine. But you should be very mindful that your backline doesn't get pinned, so you want some sort of protection on them. It does seem like your target focus is now at some point. And like here, you should be able yeah. to clean, clean up, up at least the Sire first. You're flying away, getting Indeed. more ticks than this. But uh, both teams seem to be like struggling a bit with their positioning and target focus, so mm. it's a bit weird because it like our mistakes don't get punished as hard, and their mistakes also don't get punished as hard. I think maybe it could be. Uh, we do kill through the Transcendence here, that's good. Or it's our own Transcendence. But yeah, that's right, definitely have his Graviton by now. And we have to think about our target focus. Okay, going for the Lucio. He doesn't have our ult yet. Can maybe go for the Diva to make sure they don't get the Grav combo off. Nice. Okay, that's a bit unlucky. Um, one of the things you always want to do, if you're focusing on Zarya, you have like a two second window where she can fire a Graviton. So, force her self bubble, watch her very closely. By now, you want to like instantly rush her down and Matrix her. Stunner, Matrix only, and she should not be able to fire out Graviton. She does in this case. But as you can see, the Reinhardt's not in the fight to block the anti nade and we get Shatter from behind. And we still haven't confirmed the tick. It's gonna sound very weird, Tux, but if there's anyone that wants to be in a Graviton, it's you. As soon as there's like a Graviton line, as soon as there's a Graviton line, whether it's a friendly or an enemy one, you want to be fucking in that. Yeah. Because in this case, like, there was no Diva Bomb to follow up, but the Antinate did land quite harshly after the Shadow came. If you were maybe there a bit earlier and your team focus, like, if your team focus was a bit better, you might have been able to prevent it from happening and maybe, like, already won the map, or maybe at least secured some ticks. But uh, in this case, the Antinate just landed on your team for free because there was no real shield to block it. Good calls. Mm -hmm. Now we're preparing quite well. Bit of a shame there. Yeah, but we do end up winning it. Yeah, he shouldn't have charged that, like, rashly. Indeed. <laughs> okay, that's a nanobus at Hammond, which means we're gonna focus something out, because we're never gonna kill a thing. Nice. We got one killer. What is he doing? We're very, we're very split. He's contesting point or something, I don't know, but it's weird. Alright, this is good. We land a good Graviton. Uh, we were a bit split again, but we do end up getting back. It's nice getting the right away. The point with Diva. Are you Indeed. focused? The other Diva. Alright, now we, now we can maybe, like, think about holding chokes. Like one of them is trying to get out. If two people just hold the doors there, preferably with a stun, it's just going to be very easy to clean it up. In this case, we were like all standing on point and having 
three people on point is maybe beneficial in like two CP overtime cases, so you at least get like the entire thing, like as much progress as you potentially could. But having people block the doors a bit and denying them entry towards point will probably increase like either the percentage that you get or will just make you flat out win the map there. Okay. Any questions on this one or not really? Mm. Silence ensues. Mm. Holy shit, I'm actually good. Okay, we're gonna look at Lee Jung. Hmm. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna do some interesting things. We're gonna see Glovebox POV, nice. Uh, they're actually playing Torp. No, they're not. They're gonna play McCree Far. Oh. Mm -hmm. Alright, so one thing I wanna highlight here. Um, if you're running like a uh, King of the Hill comp that doesn't have a loose show, your, oh. This one should always like speed amp people out of the gate with Lucio, then swap to Mercy and spawn and fly to the nearest target. It just makes your team a bit quicker. But also playing with, without a Lucio on maps where GOATS is uh, popular. Mm -hmm. Quick way to so get anyone who moves a step too far instantly punished. Yeah, it's very rough. Um, the composition you have now, you could, like, it's a bit weird. You could potentially make this work against GOATS, but it's very rough because you still have Ryan Zarya that will need resource on the front line. If you really want to. Also... Yeah? I also want to say I fed really hard on this map. <laughs> happens. <laughs> happens to all of us. <laughs> and I, my fair was bad here too. Okay. Well, it happens, but we're going to look at it anyways. Like, I think the Far Mercy is like, um, in many cases, like, just playing goats is uh, quite a meta thing, of course. But if you look to counter it, Far Mercy is one of the options you can do, of course. But I think the rest of your team will struggle with it because um, your Ryan's eye will still need resource on the front line and they're vulnerable to be overrun and same goes for your McCree. If you really want to make, like, make an anti goats comp, you can maybe think of some more mobile heroes, or sort of make more chaotic heroes, but the heroes you have right now still require a lot of resource and need to be in kind of the same fighting range as their goats comp, so that's very difficult. So yeah, they just take point control for free. Our fire is flanking our left side now, that's good, I like it. I see way too a uh, few right clicks here <laughs> from the McCree. Yeah. <laughs> we lose our Ana, we lose our McCree, yeah. This is kind of like the problem. We weren't even being overrun that, that much, but we just kind of lose the fight. And as soon as we have like even the slides missed up, we just get overrun by goats. I got reset. Happens. That was unlucky. <laughs> Still waiting for the reset. You got a boost there. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'd maybe look to do now is just like play far above here and just try shooting them down. At least get some damage or shield resource out of the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We should have our barrage up practically every fight if we played well. I dropped really early there. Mm. It's still kind of okay. The enemy team's not speeding on us yet, so we should be fine. And so we're setting up for barrage. The rest of us need to like really chill out. But um, I think a flying for barrage like this is a bit much. I think first you want to always have an alternate good. angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what Archer said. Yeah, I think in general it's handy if you fly around from like either right or left side and at least divide some attention. But I think also just like a bit of a Hail Mary uh, type of barrage where yeah. the enemy team will see it coming and they can put all your resources and shielding and damage in one direction. Which is exactly what Goats is really good at. Um, okay, we na like this is a bit luckier, but you never want to nano boost your Reinhardt. Um, if he doesn't have a Lucian, the enemy team does, because right now he, he cannot swing at anything at all, because everything just disperses. And we're a bit lucky that Dead Reinhardt decides to shatter, which gives us like an extra two kills from the Dead Eye. But, um, it's a messy fight. It's just a display of big dig energy from, yeah. from the Reinhardt and Adam. <laughs> that was <dumb> in this. <laughs> uh, Big dig energy for the win. <laughs> Uh, right, just ahead, so right. five feet hard <laughs> yeah. after this fight. Good news is though, we have Tangled coming up now though, so we should he, be able to uh, hold it close. As well, uh, earlier, like, the fire shouldn't be on point to clean up, you should be sitting there spamming this one door. Mm -hmm. okay. The moment there's like one person left on point, just leave it. Let Mercy come with you. Just let your team clean it up, get off charge. <laughs> okay, now we're taking a bit of a Yeah, but this is good then, now we're like getting all our damage in. Uh, it's a bit unlucky. Dropped down a yeah. bit far too. Dropped a bit far and there was no team below line, but the general premise was kind of okay, I think. At least you took an alternate angle and waited for the transit bit to wear out. Like the idea, but... Execution could have been better. Exactly. Right now, we are very split once more. We're not going to keep our Zarya thingy alive. 
Nice zoning, Heinun. <laughs> yeah. I think it was a bit rough because there was so much cover around that the enemy team could just rotate yeah, wherever they wanted he to. Yeah, was doing from behind the line. You could always jump on, on top of the line if you feel like you're not gonna get insta mm -hmm. But yeah. just, uh, yeah, I, I don't even mind using it. Just if, to see if you can get a pick or yeah. get it so fast anyway. So this break is alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I went for it, but then they all rotated. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> once again, <laughs> we're very split, <laughs> and we lose one instantly. We do get like a bit of point control now, but we're just so uh, split and prone right now. It's a perfect example of what happens though when, when the enemy team is Lucio and you're the... mm -hmm. you just hold W and. Uh, Especially when one of you is out of so... position and not rotating. Yeah. yeah. If we want to run Pharaoh Mercy, mm -hmm. then the other support. Should it be Lucio or should we just run different tanks and DPS? I would run a different tanks and a different second DPS. So like mobile tanks and mobile DPS? Mobile tanks, like a lot of people fancy Hammond these days because he's relatively autonomous and can offer a lot of crown control. But I think yeah. for like a second DPS you're definitely looking at one that has some sort of escapability and functions quite well by himself. Good look at Sombra or like a good hack on the uh, Diva so you can then get a barrage off. I think that's definitely one of the better options that you can do there. And then what other support would you run other than Mercy? Uh, if you want to like run anti-goat support you're looking at Ana Mercy. I basically, basically set up. Yeah. Because one of the things with, uh, if you're running on a Mercy, it's a bit difficult for the ghost to speed onto you. Because if you, you can maybe sleep one of them and grenade yourself as the Matrix is down. So either you're denying their ability to heal or you're taking one of them out of the fight, which is fine. Now, there is still a chance that they will overrun you. But if you grenade yourself and you get the Mercy Beam attached to you, you, you have like 100 healing per second. And then after some time, the ghost company have finally killed you if they haven't lost any of their own members. And then once the goats comp is gone again, the mercs can just fly in for a res. And if the rest of your team is mobile, they can just stay away for a bit. So it's very hard. Like, um, really good goat teams might still be able to succeed, but the honor mercy setup is generally quite strong because it at least has some very useful utility to deal with the goats comp and force them to make some rough decisions. Right, we're playing May goats. That's cool. Enemy team is playing. Are they second to the roadhog? Oh, goats. No, I was about to say standard Zen gets okay. Doesn't mean we can instantly take out the uh, white room here. Uh, quick question. Yeah. If we have Lucio, would you use charge at the spawn door or would you keep it for? The uh, you can use at the spawn door because um, is it called? It makes you get out of the spawn quicker. Like still the um, the, sp the speed amp still amplifies your charge, so just a good way to cover distance. Uh, okay. And the rest of your team like, needs to be in that as soon as they can. Here we wall, and the thing is, like, I don't have charge ready yet. It's okay, I'm, but I'm not sure. Yeah, but like, um, in many cases, charge is like beneficial for that. But do keep in mind, if you freeze him and you discord him and you stun him and you old hold M1, yeah. then he's still gonna die. <laughs> the most important yeah, thing is that you secure the relevant space where you can like put up a wall. Yeah. yeah. All right, now it's just gonna be a good cleanup, good freeze. All right, here we have to kind of see who's gonna do it because we have two people escorting now. I think we don't want to hold close. If we are having two people in spawn, essentially, and one on point. I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe. I'm just gonna base them in. Mm -hmm. I think we can be very like clear about where we want to stand here, because two people are just getting out of spawn. <laughs> two are on point, and two are now up front. Yeah, now we get the call going, that's nice. Right, one of the things I want to highlight here... Uh, okay, we get it off just in time. I'm gonna... Because the... Um, it's called the footage is not as easily recorded. I just want to put it like this. Um, right, so let's say if the enemy, instead of like going straight from the spawn, they go like for the ultimate route around here, right? One of the things I'd like you to do in that case, or what I personally fancy doing, I don't want to fight them like in the control room, which is here. I do not want to fight them there at all. I want to fight them in the white room again. So as soon as they rotate around there, I'd like to set up in the white room again and just go for a wall around here. If they end up going from like from point through main, okay, sure. At least we're all there and we can fight them. If they go like actually to the white room, it's an easy wall. But you want to look to rotate, um, like from the point up the staircase, then into this white room again instantly. Because in this case, you're giving them a lot of time, and it ends up working because the enemy team kind of made a mistake in their rotation, but they could have like just surprised you and taken all their relevant positioning before you got out. I'm going off of comms here because I have no idea what's going on. We can do get the kills though. Same. All right, we're still very deep. We're going in. Okay. Um, I was about to say you may at some point want to go back, and maybe even earlier than this, because we're once again very split, and we cannot really block off any relevant entrances right now. The enemy wants to go for. And there he goes, Zenya. Yeah. All right. Here, things are starting to get a bit messy. 
Their son comes <laughs> eating Come in from me, like, gotta help my team, brother. <laughs> yeah, okay. Alright, it's a bit of uh, a shame here that we used um, Graviton, in my opinion. Because if we look at their comp, there's a couple things that they have, uh, like, in favor of them. Because they have Diva, they might be able to eat a thing or two, but they also have, like, an insta-kill combo. We have a different type of utility with May in many cases. Um, what you can do if the enemy team is using a Grav Diva bomb, you can maybe use the Maywall to cut off the bomb and block off some damage. Either it will land like straight in front of you, so it's easier to block, or it will just be blocked off entirely, which works. Uh, but one of the things that's very crucial is realizing that uh, you can definitely get like some very successful Grav Diva bomb or a uh, Grav and May ults off if you just focus down their Diva and Freezer, because then it's basically a free uh, Graviton. But since you do not have the insta kill with Diva, you have to be very mindful of how you want to use those ults. So what I personally fancy doing is freezing up the Diva. Then throwing in a Graviton, and then also like right after that, Freezer again. And then when the Graviton is about to expire, you want to make sure that you have the Mayalt underneath. Because it will almost always react with a Transcendence, and then everyone else in your team can just farm off of five Discord, or like one Discord person, and four other people are just completely frozen up. And then at some point, the Transcendence healing will expire, because um, Mayalt and the Graviton combined last longer than that. And if they even want to use B-Drop after that, on top of it, then you literally have like your one million Earth Shatter for free. <laughs> Let's look to go for that type of ultimate rotation. Use beat drop. Okay, this is gonna be rough. Um, I wanna. I think we use Maywall to get in, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not me. Like, if you were trying to wall him off, then it's okay-ish. But we we don't really need to use Maywall here to get in because we also have like we they were not they were not playing a maze, so we do not need the Maywall to get in ourselves. Yeah. So save it for a later wall then. Yeah, same for a different opportunity. This could have been a good one on the... The Evolvement doesn't end up costing you too much, but it would have been a better usage. Okay, Ryan's Frozen is going to be easy to focus fire. Nice. Bit of an unfortunate ball, but you should be able to push in here anyways. Because now, like, without a Ryan Shield, just free freeze on everyone and farm them. Well, here, the calls here weren't bad, but yeah. now it gets a bit silent. Mm -hmm. It's always something to be said in this mm -hmm. game. Yeah, I think we recently changed a bit of our calling structure, and I think... Like, our calling and positioning is improved since yeah, this scrim. That's good, that's good. Oh yeah, that's always good. But yeah, I already agree, I think <laughs> sometimes it looks so yeah. messy, it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, okay, so we're holding them really close again. I'm surprised that we want to fight them this deep. We have to kind of use how we want to, like, we have to kind of see how we want to use our utility with Mei now. Uh, you could, in theory, look to freeze up a Reinhardt, or maybe even, like, put up a wall, kill someone, and then shatter instantly afterwards. Well, what you can do then, in that case, if you use the shatter one fight, and the Mei doesn't have ultimate yet. If you really want to, and the enemy team doesn't have the proper support ult, so you can maybe look to use uh, a Graviton Surge, then freeze people up and swing into them with Reinhardt to instantly get like all your ult charge going. One of the alternate uses they can do as well. Okay, we got one kill and a good big deck shatter. I like it. Uh, it's not time to sail, it's time to push. It's gonna be last fight soon. I think the Gravel's a bit optimistic. The Gravel's a bit early. Could have maybe used it to make sure they would not be able to touch the point at all. Got to chase a diva, nice. All right, we have to be very clear about what we're doing here because some people are still on the front line, and we're like we're able to hold them off eventually, but we could have maybe done it a bit cleaner. And if there was just like a bit more time on the clock, we would have probably gotten overrun there. Oh, that would have been rough. So yeah, I think the make composition is definitely very strong on the control center, but you could maybe look to use the um, like the utility of May and the ultimate in some very specific ways. You could use it if you like really want to confirm a fight. Like, as in on a retake, to make sure you, that you just deny all their support ults and farm a fuck ton of ults yourselves. And alternatively, you can use, like, May ult, Reinhardt ult, and Zarya ult, like, almost always in rotation of one another. So you can instantly farm up the ones that were used. That's, like, more of a defensive use when you have point control. Uh, unfortunately, I have to leave now. Uh, it's my friend's okay. birthday. Uh, sure so, thing. Uh, thanks I'll just... The feedback no worries. Really, really I'm just gonna put it in the, uh... I'll put it in the YouTube later. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely yeah. check out the recording. Have a good yeah. one, guys. Have a good one. Yeah. Thanks, okay. So right now we're playing uh, an, an interesting set of dive here. Um, so one of the things I do like here is that this composition is very hard to dive into, so it's hard for them to really get to you, but this McCree is once again very vulnerable. I don't know how you feel about Shelly, but I feel he's a bit out of place. No reply. No reply? <laughs> Shelly? Might be getting a drink, oh, maybe. I could be. I'll just wait for one second. Hmm. Let us wait for our gamer.
if not, like um, usually people will play a far here then with far mercy, so to make sure then in that case, basically no one on your team is very diveable. You have Lucia, Winston Deva, far mercy tracer, and then it's very hard for them to dive or find meaningful damage into that. <laughs> okay, nice. Um, I was just about to ask you something. Um, so in visor, look at the team comp they have. I feel that yep. McCree is a bit out of place. I agree, one hundred percent. I would suggest a far there. Yep, especially if you're playing with Mercy. I always mm, run yeah. the classic Ana Genji as well, but I don't like this on this map, honestly. Yeah. Because like I said, if we have a far here, there's like nothing that they could ever dive or speed on, really. Unless they have like insta-kill with Omega headshots. But like, our combo will be so slippery then. That it makes it very hard for them to actually uh, focus something down. Alright, we lose one. Unlucky. And that's probably time for a reset, because we cannot res it either. Unless we get a clutch kill. Mercy is half. Yeah, I was about to win this fight. Now we're actually doing a good job here. I liked how we, uh, Tuck's gonna see this later, but I liked how we went into the Mercy without using cooldowns and then chased her. When she yeah, was that was hers. a nice, nice one. Got a half HP and then just punished. Indeed. You're using her in the fly to not get that far away. Indeed, was good. Uh, can you pause for a moment? Yeah. Uh, do you have like a dedicated projectile and a dedicated hit scan, or do you have just left like uh, characters you play with on the DPS? Uh, well, Lone Wolf is kind of like he plays, he plays like tracking heroes, right? Like I used to be like, my old team, you know, I was the hit scan, mm -hmm. like I play with all, you know, every hit scan, blah blah yeah. blah. But and then like we made this team with Lone Wolf, and he plays kind of like Tracer, you know, Saria, you know, heroes like that. Okay. Uh, so then I, you know, I then I I picked up like Genji, you know, and like Hanzo and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. As, okay. as well as Widow and McCree and. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So you, uh, yeah, I see what you mean. Okay. Which one of you plays Farah though? Uh, like in this vote, I played it like dance, but uh, we kind of talked about it and like, uh, Lone Wolf used to play Farah a lot more like back in the day, so like we kind of shifted into that he plays, like the okay. the Farah. Okay. I'm right. curious. Mm -hmm. Always good to know. A lot of teams these days have just like a hit scan DPS and one flex DPS. They don't per se have a hardcore dedicated um, projectile yeah. DPS anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just old. Yeah, I'm also old. Don't worry. I once had the, five the tribal term we used to, to refer to. Yeah, I also yeah, used you gotta to call it flex now. That triple tank and goats. And yeah. <laughs> projectile brick player, my favorite. Right. One thing I'm looking for though, uh, if we have like a very mobile comp, we want to make sure they cannot instantly take up relevant space on point here with their death ball. So I think we definitely want to like maybe get some damage in going through here. And it could be with Tracer poking a bit, it could be with Dave or Winston maybe getting some, or Lucia getting a knockoff. But we should not allow their Ryan Zarya, which is also very slow with Honor Mercy, to get into this point like so freely. I do eventually get the kill, nice. I can see a bit of a window. Uh, and now it's just going to be like a good punish. Um, if we use our own Valkyrie and they have nothing to really counteract this, it's good. Just clean up. Maybe the high noon is a bit too much. It wasn't really needed, but uh, yeah. it took a clean up. We were like free up when it happened, or two up. Uh, like, I, I don't really know how to really like use like high noon properly in scrims. Because <laughs> I feel like it's like either you have to like, the whole team has to work around it. Your whole like game plan has to like, everyone mm. needs to know like do a certain part for it to work. You know, like no, no, you know, blah, blah like everything. Yeah. Or you just like throw it out there, you know, just kind of like a, you know, I as mean, a distraction or zoning. Yeah, or, for, know, yeah, for all the up. memes, like, yeah, people yeah. talk, it is good for zoning and, and just punishing people, especially like on, on surprise, if you go on a surprise flank where you're not like, you're still safe enough, but it just helps yeah. you, you like exceed the range sometimes. If you, if you see someone who's far away, and yeah. you take you more time to kill with your left click, you just press Q instead and hope you don't get slept. How do you from... feel about like, let's say like a start? A fight is starting. I know notice that their fighter used to shift, like boost up in there. Then I high noon, so like I'm gonna probably get the kill at least on a fire, right? On with high mm -hmm. noon, mm -hmm. and that's like the worst case scenario is like I get the kill and they burn rest before the fight, and then they like start the fight without the rest on the fire. Uh, like, I mean, yeah, you, you can definitely do it, um, but you could also just go far back and wait for them to to jump. Yeah, now yeah. they have a Ryan, of course, but usually you would play Winston in on this map. Just wait for them to jump in, you can use it to break bubble, you can use it to force them to hide. So they use the cooldowns, but they gotta hide anyway. And uh, especially against Mercy Ult, because a lot of Mercies will just be retarded and fly straight up into the air. And they won't actually be near cover, like near enough yeah. to the cover to where they can dodge it. So you press Q and you basically get almost a guaranteed kill on the Mercy Valk. 
Yeah, and like um, use, it, use it as well as like uh, we know that they're gonna blade, right? So I position myself like as far as back as I possibly mm. can. Like so he can't like just one dash to me. Yeah. And, like immediately when he blades, I just press high noon so it like forces him to like take two seconds of the blade, you know, like the Yeah, exactly. So like, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So so essentially as a zoning, but it does punish if, if they don't respect the zoning. Yeah. And that's what it's like really shines in. Yeah. Uh, but also if you're against goats, I use to reload. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. For the memes. Yeah. But um yeah, it's kind of interesting. With Fire Mercy, what a lot of Fire Mercy players will do is that the fire will shift up and the mercy will follow and they will not be able to yeah. dip down in time. That's uh, like a good opportunity to get a double kill. I think even getting the solo kill is not even too bad. Yeah. But then again, I'm not a McCree player. I'm a shameless Winston one trick. Yeah, it depends on how far away they are. Yeah. Usually you can just double link the front. Can I use bomb here? Except there's a uh, blue dot on the screen, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. My yeah. OCD. Don't worry. Getting triggered. Happens. Yeah, we do get a quick kill in the Zen here. Uh, yeah, the enemy team wants to get nice right there. Yeah. Oh, you get picked off, which is a shame. It's a bit you of a shame. You could probably dash to the health pack there if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. you, you were close enough. But uh, yeah. yeah. I it was a bit tricky to realize that the game yes. was... Uh, they do, so however, play without a Lucia once again. So it's a pretty uh, easy dive on the back line, at least accessible. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> I was about to say you were coming in for the poop, but... <laughs> it doesn't always work as well as you'd like. Ooh, yeah, it's a lot of ults throwing at you. It's kind nice of okay to lose though. this, because you lost your Lucia like, kind of for free. And they Big use Grav, Shatter, High Noon, Nano. <laughs> It's a bit of a shame I've used Winston ult, but, uh, and maybe the Valkyrie, but it's kind of okay because he used so many ults. Pulse as well. Sorry? The we pulse is no. ah, too okay. important. Yeah. yeah. You can throw it and, and hope for some some things you, if you don't have a particular target to go for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we land a big bomb here. Yeah. Big bomb, let's go. Yeah, uh... Can we just pause like 10 seconds, like uh, kind of like the, the whole McCree thing? Like mm -hmm. we came like, against a team that like they played so hard around this McCree, right? So they would they would play Mac May McCree, right? They mm -hmm. would high noon on high ground and then they would like wall us up behind our Ryan shield. <laughs> so like the Ryan could get like, you know, four or five man high noon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's consistent. Uh, yeah, I know. It's but, a bit of a stretch. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's possible with, if you're playing McCree, it's a good strat. <laughs> yeah. Also, while the Kree up sometimes do some surprise stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I once uh, on this map we once played May and, and we like to do it on the bridge where high noon you get like you stand on the bridge you get walled up. And the team surprise, like, motherfucker! Yeah, but yeah, that's not consistent and it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. if the enemy team picks a widow, they just click your head. Yeah, you, you can commit <laughs> a lot as well. You both the wall and and the high noon. It's if it doesn't work out, it could be tricky. Some people also use the wall uh, to to boost the mother graph. Mm -hmm. It's me. Yeah, you can continue. Sorry. Okay. Oh, no worries. Alright. It was good here because the enemy team doesn't have a Lucio. They didn't have a Reinhardt nearby and they used Zarya team bubble. So yeah, this is very well like uh exploiting the fact that they did not have a Lucio, they do not have Zarya team bubbles, and it's just clean up. She falls off the map, nice. It's also a great example of why walls are the best shield in the game. Indeed. Yeah. My favorite type of tank, the wall. Yeah. <laughs> right. But that is the uh entire review like in short summary um it's a bit difficult because of course you did have some trials uh in this one i think you can definitely look at uh like rotations a bit more because sometimes you seem to struggle a bit in rotating with like with your tank supports and dps alike i think that's definitely one of the things you can maybe look up more you did have like a good like understanding of um like team compositions and team uh communication to some extent you can maybe fine tune some things but the general like premise and structure is there uh one thing you can maybe do a bit more as well is start to do like some more planning uh, on how you want to approach a fight. I think those are like some of the key points that I'd like to highlight. But another yeah. was a bit weird because you did have a trial and the enemy team seemed to look like not want to play Lucio, <laughs> which is just a free backline in essence. Uh, any further questions on your end? Or... Mm. I have a couple of comments too uh, at some point. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, you can. Uh, it's not something I talked, uh, like, I, I, I stopped the VOD for a lot, but uh, instead of reacting, like actually um, planning out for what's going to happen, because you, like your calls are surprisingly good, you know what they have in terms of alt a lot of the time, you know what they're mm -hmm. doing, you know what they play, but actually making a yeah, proper plan and following through. Yeah, adjusting yeah. Uh, appropriately, kind of.
I think mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's uh, like really sets apart teams. But mm-hmm. I'm I'm very impressed, honestly. Uh, my team is is higher SR, but you're significantly better in terms of of communication and team. Uh, the guys I coach. So maybe I'll uh, I'll spank them a bit next Should time do. I'm with them. Yeah, and like since this world we've like improved a lot, you know, like we've had our coach, you know, go like. Like, you know, like this, what he went through with us and stuff like that. Then we've, like, mm-hmm. looked to, like, you know, improve a lot, at least on, like, target calling and positioning. Because it's, like, something you can improve in, you know, every scrim, you know, you can, yeah. like, actively work on. And then as well, there's, like, alt management and alt planning. What are we going to use next fight, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're still struggling a bit against, like, Sombra comps. And, like I said, like, in the bidding in, like, Farah comps. Like, we do well against goats, you know, goats with goats and, like, dive, you know, like... But then when they play like this Farah, you know, like quad DPS with Farahs and, you know, like so, like oppressive Sombras that, you know, like have EMP every fight coupled with Barrage, mm-hmm. it's like, it really like, because we feel like we like we don't know what to do. And like, you know, a coach tells us, you know, we should play, you know, like, you know, against quad DPS, like Anna, Moira, Goats, you know, stuff like that. And then, of course, like everyone knows the basics to, you know, like maybe like hide our, you know, support. So like the Sombra has to choose like either support or send alone or the whole team you know and like all this mm-hmm. but then you know in execution it feels like you know the farah just you know three taps the whole, mm. whole team you know or yeah 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 Farah is definitely a problem there but but uh try and, and look into project the mccree combat it's one of the the things that i've seen a lot of success like uh like have a lot of success against the quad dps yeah mm-hmm. uh, okay and i'm sure your mccree will enjoy uh being the center of attention yeah, that's... <laughs> and then actually playing mccree so i can get off brig Playing exactly. DPS, hello? What year is but, this? Uh, also, Mario Goats uh, is not really a thing in 2019. No. <laughs> I, I, have, like, I haven't seen Mario it. Goats. It's played yeah. like, uh, if you're really a Goats Hunter team, you use it to like counteract spam comps, but indeed there are better options to counteract like quad DPS comps and whatnot, and spam comps than yeah. another Goats comp, to be honest. Because we played like Mario Goats and we noticed, you know, yeah, it's a shit ton of healing, but like, the Moira runs out of, like, the juice, like, mm-hmm. so fast, you know, compared to an Ana, which mm-hmm. has, like, more utility, a better ult, everything like that. I was about that, to say, you know? there's no utility of Moira. Yeah, don't I worry, mean, one of the few, die soon. Yeah, but one of the few, like, kind of funny things almost you can do with Moira is as soon as you have Colas, you can, like, chase down a Mercy in the Far Mercy duel with the Diva. Yeah. Like, that's the only, like, fun thing, a bit of, like, fun fact utility for us is just rotate around properly, <laughs> put out healing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, we're gonna tr- definitely try more. The we tried it last night, but we didn't really like. That's the first time we really tried the pro- like you know Super Macria comp. Yeah. But you know, it, it, we still have to like practice it a lot because you know like if I don't get armor pack as Macria or like I don't the get orb. The pro- like I just die, you know, like because mm-hmm. there's so much focus mm-hmm. on me, you know, the Farah, the the tracer, you know, like it's yeah. It puts some pressure on McCree as well to hit his shots, but um, if your team builds around you like properly, a McCree with like constant healing and a brick nearby is just so hard to dislodge. He can be very strong. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll point you to China and Denmark, especially in the World Cup, if you want. They did a lot, yeah. I know uh, China playing with Crystal was some of the most impressive play I've seen using that comp. Mm-hmm. He's an incredible player. What would you recommend? Like, you probably said this like during the, but uh, just to like, you know, summarize it like what what tanks would you like suggest because it felt yesterday when tax was on ryan you know like yeah he had his shield but he felt like he like didn't really do it yeah yeah Protect him like, comp, uh, uh, winston. winston most of the time yeah a couple of situations where you could argue for ryan but winston mm-hmm. is definitely uh yeah it's gonna draw it out here let's say i have winston <laughs> or reinhardt and then it's like diva uh zen lucio rig mccree yeah in this How case you say- your mccree yeah. will take a lot of the resources right like he's your center of attention mm-hmm. Winston like can function relatively well without much resources. Reinhardt needs a lot of resources put into him as well. Seeing as you also do not have a um, Zarya in your team, so your support will have to suddenly put like a lot of resources into the Reinhardt, and then it leaves the McCree empty-handed. Having a Winston yeah. means you can synergize well with the Diva and have more peeling and not require resources. So McCree can truly shine. That's like the general premise. Yeah. Uh, I, I was thinking like then you know uh, what if they have a Widow in that quad DPS? But then again you know if you have a Winston that can. You know, kind of mm-hmm. keep the widow busy enough. You know, for the McCree to do his job. Keep him at bay is fine, yeah. And yeah. also with McCree, I think you want to play a bit more around, like shorter ranges because you don't want to take a widow duel when she has like four times the range compared to you. Yeah. Just the spam ADAD and click your head four times. Yeah, you can easy. even right click easy. <laughs> right click, yeah. <laughs> right click from a distance. Let's go. <laughs> My do favorite. Do the triple right click strat. 
Yeah, and even high noon. Let's go. High noon, the widow in open space. <laughs> <laughs> no balls. <laughs> right. Um, any other questions from you guys, or not really? Um, um, let me think. Fonkers. We've been like kind of. Uh, since like, you know, like we are sick, like we think like, you know, dive is obviously a lot harder to like, you know, like, because like, you know, in goats, like target calling is kind of easy, like in that way, mm -hmm. you know, like everyone's there, you know, but in, in, in dive, you know, the situation like can change, you know, very easily, you know, someone can get outplayed, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So we were like, kind of going into like floats. Yeah. And so like, how would you like, just give a simple, like idea of how to like to play goats this is like the winston jumps in and like in the middle of the team and breaks them apart with the bubble and then um, they go in how do you kind of like dance around and not take too much poke damage as you don't have a rhyme you know like how do you disengage like yeah you disengage with lucia but how do you like it feels like when we play goals like a, a lot of times they can just like choose to take the fight when they want and then just like you know speed on us and then just like the rhyme swings you know and gets like mm -hmm. shatters like every so, like, sure. how do you want to play floats against an enemy goats team, you mean? Or Yeah, like, usually we play floats, and then they switch onto goats, and we still, like, have some ults, or, like, you know, that's mm -hmm. fight, or, you know. Yeah. Um, it's a bit tricky. Like, uh, with Winston, of course, you cannot fight, like, the center of attention too much, because runner is just better at that, has more shielding, more damage, etc. So you want to always, like, look to play around high grounds as you can. So hmm. if there's, like, some high grounds that you can use that the enemy runner cannot really get to, then it's like yeah. okay if you want to run floats. If it's like a very like linear centered map like King's Row, you're definitely looking at just straight up Reinhardt. You can forget forget about Winston. But if you have like a good high ground position, you can get a lot of cleave damage in, which will at some point at least like confirm a killer of course resource from the enemy team. Um, yeah. If they did then decide to speed on your front line, you can look to like jump in for your back line and peel and cut some people off of the bubble. It can protect some damage, maybe prevent some healing. And then by that time, honestly, if you play like really well, you'll have your ultimate up like a lot of the times. Because the, yeah. the standard Zen goats with Reinhardt has a lot of like very uh, lethal ultimate combos. Like one good shatter can really mess with you, and then yeah. one good gravity bomb and pin the runner out of the way can just mess with you. You will lack that with Winston, but one thing they can do with Winston is just farm up your ultimate every single fight. And as long as you can uh, it's called keep the fight going, it's generally like quite good to use Winston's ult very liberally in that case, because you can just get so much like uh, stalling going, the fight just goes on forever. But you do have to be careful that you actually land up getting a kill out of your ult, otherwise you're just yeah. feeding another Graviton. So you want to definitely like look to farm that ult really quickly, and then as soon as you have Primal Rage, look to uh, isolate one of the targets. And if they decide to speed on your frontline early, you're using your bubbling or jump to get back to your team and protect him, and then cut the enemy off there. Would you say like, you know, let's say like Busan downtown, like, mm -hmm. like, would that be an okay uh, map to like roll out on, on floats? Because either you, um, either yeah, they could play you know, like a Widow or Farah, you know, or they can play, you know, mm -hmm. Hard Goats or Dive, you know, like it's pretty, you Open, know, the high yeah. grounds is, yeah, and like the Winston mm -hmm. can contest the high ground, you know, it's very like, mm -hmm. is that, would that be an okay map to roll out on Yeah, floats? that would be a good, uh, a good decent floats map. Other ones would also be uh, Route 66, the first two phases have like different levels of high ground. And if the enemy Reinhardt's standing on the floor, you can just take one of those high grounds and just start zapping him and uh, at some point hopefully win. Uh, it's yeah. currently played quite a lot on Ilios Ruins as well, if you've watched Over Overwatch League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to say too. that too, like Ilios Ruins. Yeah, exactly. Those are the type of maps you'd look at. Ones that have like um, some sort of high ground, but still with like a decent amount of cover, because you don't want like a super open map like Junkertown, no. where it's like Widowmaker Fiesta. Yeah. Yeah. Junkertown's the best map. <sighs> Double sniper. Yes. I'll be, um, fun. I may upset you, Shally, but uh, no, I actually like Horizon Lunar Colony. It's my favorite map. <laughs> I'm not lying. I just lost faith in humanity, actually. It happens, what but I'm not, I'm not even a human. I'm not even a human, so. Uh, we're like, we're gonna, like, we got our tournament starting next week, and like, mm -hmm. uh, we have like these maps like Junkertown and Horizon that's like first week is gonna be played and we like tried streaming them yesterday but we were like never played them before like like almost never. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like what would you say like would a decent rollout be like on attack on both maps? Because like you know, you think Junkertown or like uh Horizon and you think about comp and it's just like, you know, AIDS, Bastion, bunker comps and shit mm -hmm. like that. But like I don't know in screams like are they gonna run like goats or you know, like um what would you say Tricky. It depends. Like, let me put it this way: EU is a is a region that has traditionally like tanky compositions, 
So you'll definitely encounter some goats one trick team that will literally run goats on every single map they can encounter. <laughs> Let's put yeah. it that way. Um, yeah. For like good rollouts um, on Junker Town, people these days run like a lot of goats still because snipers are like very easily countered with goats, and there's no like real other alternative unless you're like mm. really committed to the bastion comps. On um, the first uh, point of Junker Town, on the last part, I think snipers are still really strong. Yeah. But... On like the initial start of the Junker Town, on the first goats. point, it's a bit more tricky to run goats. Yeah. On well, another uh, to run snipers, uh, but that still, sense. I still think you can get a lot of value out of running a uh, double sniper. Yeah. On if you can play them uh, very well, yeah. like I've seen it happen uh, with dive tanks and just mm. you just kite, uh, but it's hard because there's a couple of buildings the goats can run into, and mm -hmm. it's one of those maps that uh, I think everything goes on right now. It's a bit of a skill check, yeah. I mean, if you want to, it depends on what you're good at, of course. Yeah. Depends yeah. how good you are at snipers. Yeah, or how good you are at goats. Or how good you are at goats, mm -hmm. right? That too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, as for... What's it called? As for right. Horizon, um, yeah. you can, like, like play some sort of tank-heavy comp, like goats or other variations, and yeah. go to point. I personally favor running uh, some sort of dive on there. I, It's a bit weird. I like one sniper with uh, a Genji, Ana, Lucia, and then dive tanks, so... Because yeah. both first and second point have like relatively long sidelines, so I think a sniper can surely benefit from that. And then point two is like such a like pain in the ass to take. That you might like want to just push in with one nano blade uh, on point B. However, Genji is I think pretty hard to play on point B of the uh, Horizon Lunar Colony because the sidelines are just a bit too long. I feel they can maybe push yeah. out one nano blade and then swap to something else. Yeah, but it would really like depend on what you're some, good at. We played some really scuffed comp yesterday, like on Horizon Attack. Like we played triple tank. With Sombra, I think. Like, that's still okay. Tan, Instead of Brick. Sombra, oh. Lucius, then. Yeah, uh, so that's okay Diva enough. Zarya. It's okay Winston enough. Diva Zarya, Sombra, Lucius, then. It and sounds good, like, but it's okay enough. Like, you know, force them to, like, contest to the point and then just burn them, you know, meanwhile, Sombra mm -hmm. farms CMP. Yeah. I mean, one of the things you're looking at for, like, triple tank dive compositions is that you need to be super quick on your engagements, because uh, the longer it takes for you to confirm a kill, the worse the comp actually gets. So you're definitely looking yeah. at like uh, having a very clean fight. But the composition itself is kind of okay, because traditionally, at least in EU, quite a lot of people have subbed out break for um, Sombra, in which case you're basically playing dotes without a, de uh, without a break, which is still okay enough. Yeah. <laughs> I think Shadow Rise, I don't know if you remember this, but my own team, we used to play a super scuffed goats variant on Horizon Lunar Colony. Like we'd swap uh, out brigades for Symmetra. Symmetra. Oh <laughs> we like God, ran yeah, off point with Symmetra. <laughs> but once we learned to destroy the teleporter, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. So yeah, we played uh, Goats with a Symmetra instead of Brig and teleported straight to point, set ourselves up there, put some turrets to make people slow, and then we'd <laughs> force them on point. That was our scuff version uh, to take point A of Horizon. It worked out surprisingly well, too. So would you like... If they, like, let's say they play Bunk or something, would you prefer like a Dive or a Goats there? A 100% Dive. Yeah. If you're really good at Goats, you can maybe make it work, but with Dive, you're, just dumb, like, uh, you're way better at avoiding damage, which is just helpful against Bunker Comp. And because they have like such little mobility, you can probably take a lot of like very like uh, cheeky angles, and when they're all clumped up, I mean, against like Bunker Comps, I usually just keep playing Ana Lucia, Winston Diva, and then you have Sombra again, just DPS. If they really want to bunker up close, at some point you're going to have a Nano Blade with an EMP Diva Bomb. Yeah. Watch them group up close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those are the things uh, that I personally prefer, but there are other options out there, so you can uh, always like come up with your own ideas as well. It's just the things that I preferred back in the day and that I prefer coaching teams, but uh, there's not like one single answer that's only the correct one. There's multiple yeah, options, yeah, of course. course. Well, <laughs> goats. Hey, well, uh, yeah, I still think Goats is the strongest comp right now, but isn't the update coming on Tuesday? I think so, yeah. At least Bastion's so, going live. Is your tournament next week? Uh, Open yeah, Division is yeah. going to start the 23rd. Yeah, yeah, so it's going to have the patch, isn't it? Uh, probably, yeah, but Baptiste will ah, only be enabled in like the second yeah, yeah, week or true. so. Uh, but then, Scrim on PTR I... <laughs> would probably not be a bad idea. Uh, I'm, I gotta get my team to do it too. Sure, sure. I'm gonna play Doomfist then. Doomfist Goats. <laughs> uh, Doomfist we Goats. did that as well at times. I don't know, like, Shally probably, like, we didn't scrim against each other that much, like, during the later stages of XLI, but at some point, like, we weren't very good at GOATs, so we just ran a lot of May Doomfist, who were both super strong back then, in a 2 2 setup. Mm. Yeah, that was like, a good fun. Doomfist goes on Mega Base, oh my god. <laughs> Doomfist Brig oh, yes. on one We had once in Open Vision, we also just ran Doomfist Brig and just bullied the main tank. I felt a bit bad, yeah. but at least we won. <laughs> Poor Iron Man. 
<laughs> we we were really just like double sniper. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you remember Archul. I know. Yeah, I watched did. your uh, last game when it was being broadcasted on broadcast. Oh yeah. RPG. It's good shit. I got the praise, dude. You got the praise. So happy about that. I also saw the enemy team one trick and go to the island failing, so I was happy. It's true. <laughs> Does happy too. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that was, that was a good uh, note to end my, my player career. Same See if me. it ends up starting back in, uh, when the next match hits. Yeah, for me it was just, um, hey, we're going to do a very nice thing. I'm just going to finalize my player career with one big five-man Earth Shatter on King's Row, winning us the map. Then I'm calling it GG's. <laughs> By the way, um, I'm going to stop recording.